Big 12 Conference. It's the Missouri Tigers visiting the eighth-ranked Texas Longhorns. And good evening, everybody, along with 10-year NFL vet Dave Lapham. I'm Drew Goodman. Everybody excited from Austin to Columbia, north to Lincoln, about the Big 12, arguably the best conference in college football. Let's talk first about the University of Missouri. They're led by a junior tailback who's known as Forrest Gump, affectionately. His real name, Brock Olivo, he's something else. He really is. This guy's a football player. Head coach Larry Smith said, in three years, this guy has not had a bad practice or a bad game. He is the heart and soul of this Missouri football team. He's the only running back in the history of the school to rush for 200 yards in two separate games, 1,009 yards away from the school rushing record. He can get it done, and there's a whole lot of folks for the University of Texas that can get it done, beginning with their quarterback, the godfather of rock and roll into the end zone, James Brown. James Brown, and his shoulder feels good, and this guy can beat you with his feet and his throwing arm. And the numbers are, speak for themselves. 13 wins, two losses, one tie. That's how you evaluate a quarterback. How many games does his team win? And this gentleman can win football games because he knows how to play the game. He set two records last year, Drew. He set a single season passing yardage record as well as 19 touchdown passes. He can hurt you more ways than one. They're talking conference title in the new Big 12 down here. They're also doing something they haven't done in more than a decade. They're talking national title. Can Missouri pull the upset? 70,000 in the house, most of them Longhorn fans, as you'd expect. The third member of our crew down on a whole new carpet is Lisa Molaski. Lisa, take it away. Thanks a lot, Drew. Yes, we're talking real grass, the new rage in college football. The University of Texas Longhorns will be playing on the real stuff for the first time at Memorial Stadium in 27 years. They ripped out that old Astro turf back in April, and in its place, a beautiful bed of Bermuda grass. This is cut to five eighths of an inch and players and coaches say it is very very fast most importantly though this field will always stay dry below this surface there is a computer monitoring system which will pump the water out if the field gets too moist that's been very very important this last week in Austin because it's been raining like crazy a beautiful night tonight and the grounds crew tells me the field is in perfect condition great news back to you Drew all right thank you very much there is Larry Smith they're good friends talking about Larry Smith and John Makovic. He has done a great job at so many programs, including Southern Cal. There is Makovic, who is at Illinois, coached together with Larry Smith, his close friend at the University of Arizona. In fact, they shared an office back in the mid 70s. Makovic, the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator was Larry Smith. Sean Mitchell and Wayne Garrity back deep to receive for Texas. They won the toss. Garrity is on the left, Mitchell on the right. Mark Norris into the football, we're underway. This will be McGarrity. And he won't get to the 20. He's done at the 19-yard line. That is where Texas will set up shop. There he is, the godfather of rocking and rolling to the end zone, James Brown. And he is just flat out a winner. When you ask coaches about him, they say, well, he throws the football well, he's dangerous when he runs, but the bottom line is Texas is 13-2-1 when James Brown is the starting quarterback. And Drew, I think uh, Missouri's defensive coaches are very, very concerned if James Brown starts running the football, a double threat. I formation, Williams is the fullback, Sean Mitchell the tailback. And it goes to Mitchell, balls loose. And Mitchell falls on it. Someone dove over the top. Daryl Chapman, the inside linebacker. Let's check the skill guys for the Longhorns. Sean Mitchell and Ricky Williams, perhaps the best tandem in the nation. They were over 2,000 yards collectively last year. You have to go back to 77 when Earl Campbell was a tailback to see that kind of production. Up front, Dan Neal, maybe the best right guard in America. He is an All-American. Second down and 15 for the Horns. Brown with time. Brown incomplete. He was looking at Adams, and it was broken up by Shad Chris. That is a matchup we will talk all about this evening. Defensively for the Missouri Tigers, Larry Smith preaches defense, and they have become very good defensively. They're young up front right now with three new starters defensively, and we'll check those for you in a moment. 
They have good linebackers and an outstanding secondary. Third down and 15 for the Longhorns. They need the 29. And it's broken up again. It'll be fourth down. Chad Chris in the neighborhood. John Makovic's team goes three and out on their first possession of 1996. I'll tell you, Missouri's defensive coaches couldn't be happier. They got them off schedule on first down with a blitz to stop the running game. Chatham comes in and blitzes from his linebacker position. Chapman does to knock them off schedule. Two incompletions on second and third down. It's a defensive coordinator's joy. One, two, three, and out. And Missouri should get good field position. Ricky Ross back deep. Mark Schultes, the junior from Sherman, Texas, will punt it. And he hits an outstanding punt. Ross from the 37, knocked down immediately. Coming down on special teams, Mike Scarborough. A backup wideout, a punt of 50, no return. There's Corby Jones, the sophomore quarterback for the University of Missouri. His dad is Marcus, and he is a guy that played football at the University of Missouri and is now the running back coach there, excuse me, Curtis. The trouble with Corby Jones a year ago and half a season is he had trouble completing passes. Yeah, you look at that ratio, zero touchdowns, four interceptions, that's not a good quarterback rating. They go immediately to Olivo and he picks his spot and works out for six or seven. Solid gain on first down for Missouri. Here are their skill guys, Olivo, is just terrific. Uh, shade under 1,000 yards last year. He's a junior. James is an enormous fullback. Ross Appel and Mike Morris, very experienced up front. Bebel Reedy and Niemeyer are relatively new. Appel's got the big matchup tonight, working against the great nose guard for the Longhorns, Akins. Second down and short for Missouri. Play action pass. Jones will keep it. Jones will have a first down and more. Flip side of the 50. Knocked out of bounds inside the 35 of Texas. Westbrook bounced him out, but Missouri is threatening. I'll tell you why they gave uh, Corby Jones a run pass option. And this is a guy that can beat you with his feet and his arm, too. He's looking to throw the football. Nobody containing the outside. Everybody got washed inside. Corby Jones decides to just tuck it and run. And boy, did he for big, big yards. Larry Smith has to love that 24-yard scamper. It's first and 10 at the 32 of Texas for Missouri, just underway from Austin. Olivo goes into the deep eye. Lingerfeld, the tight end, swaps to the wide side. Here's the option. And Jones has some room, but it shuts down the hurry. Ball on the carpet. Texas claims they have it. Tug of war right now. The strongest wrists and hands win. A lot of times you start out with the football in the bottom of the pile, and somebody else ends up with it. Tug of war. Who's got the strength in the forearms, wrists, and hands? Well, Corby Jones is six foot one, 216 pounds. He's stocky as a quarterback, and I guess he has strong wrists. And I'll tell you what, he sometimes sometimes the adrenaline starts pumping because you don't want to let go of that football unnecessarily. And Corby Jones gets he gets sandwiched. I mean, he was the meat of the sandwich right there between a couple of te Texas defenders. Carter at strong safety position and a linebacker. Hickerson in between. Knocked the ball loose. Second down and six for Missouri. This is the fullback and a big opening for James. He goes 6'3 and 255. And the next fullback, Ernest Blackwell, 6'3, 250. Here's the defensive front for the University of Texas. It's an odd front. Chris Aikens, maybe the strongest man in college football. He benches 551. That's incredible. He moves small neighborhoods, evidently. I'll tell you what, he's a he's a shot put with legs. He's six feet tall, approaching 300 pounds. You can't get under his pads. He's a real problem. Tyson King, the leading tackler the last couple of years. And Bryant Westbrook, the best hitter on the team as a corner. Olivo, again, a little bit of room. Bounces wide, gets to the 15-yard line. Four or five on first down. Matt Jones, the 
inside backer dropped him there. But Missouri, most impressive here in the opening moments of this one. Well, one thing that the Texas defensive coaches were concerned about was Missouri running the option effectively. They've done that, and also controlling the clock by running the football, controlling the tempo of the game. They've done that. Texas coaches are concerned. Our defense has got to get off the football field. So far, Missouri's offense will not let them. Corby Jones checks off. He has a slot to the top. Missouri sees a blitz. Jones gets to the corner again. For it at about the 12 yard line. Bryant Westbrook, who always brings a little bit extra. Knocks Jones backwards. How often, Dave, have you seen a cornerback recognizing the best hitter on your defense? I tell you, usually it's an inside linebacker or a safety, but the key right there is the block by the fullback, chopping the linebacker down to the turf. Excellent block up front by the big horses at the fullback position. They got a couple of them. Nice pop at the sideline, too. Corby Jones, you got to check your, your fillings right now. Make sure they're all in because he got one labeled right under the face mask. Big third down here. They need to get it to the nine. Third and a long three. Pressure coming. Jones has it knocked down. It'll be fourth down. He had pressure from Tyson King right up the middle. So Texas blitzes the young quarterback, and Jones will hobble off. Well, one thing you have to do if you're an offensive lineman from Missouri is block from the inside out. And this was no secret, no mystery right here. Tyson King just comes right up the middle clean, and he labels Corby Jones. Corby Jones took some serious hits on that drive. He's going to be a tough quarterback physically, which he is. This will be a 30-yard attempt from the far hash mark. Last year, Mark Norris was 7 of 7 inside 40. Good hold. It yep. is up and through. So Missouri, a team that was shut out three times a year ago. They had trouble scoring. They march it down the field against Texas and Austin and take an early lead. Missouri breaks out on top three to nothing. Mark Norris connects from 30 yards away. And Jerry Burnt, the offensive coordinator for Missouri, visiting with Corby Jones. Number seven, the right of your picture. Here's the scoring drive for Mizzou. Eight plays, 50 yards. And I know they didn't want to come away with six, Dave Lapham, but they have to be very, very pleased. Well, they do, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, all those yards are on the ground. And uh, that was one fear that the Texas coaching staff had defensively. You know, last year, their defense gave up 100 yards rushing to nine different running backs. They were 55th in the country overall in yards allowed. Uh, against the running game, so Missouri controlled the tempo just like they wanted to on the ground. Norris into the football again. This is in the direction of McGarity from the goal line. And McGarity again struggling to get to the 20 yard line. Uh, I think he arrived there with that second effort. That's where Texas will set up shop. You know, one the team must, Dave. Tell you about the team must. You're going to tell us about it. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. First off, the University of Texas, Dave, what do you have? Well, they wanted to get off to a good start, which they didn't do. Missouri scored first in the football game. Texas wanted to get that done to get the crowd into the game, eliminate, eliminate the option in the running game. They didn't get that done, and they didn't avoid the big play as Corby Jones got around the corner. So far, Missouri is doing everything Texas didn't want them to. Williams and Mitchell split. Brown, the quarterback, looks to Adams. Plenty of room. He'll have the first down and dances out of bounds. Mike Adams now just four receptions shy of Eric Metcalf's Texas record for receptions. The senior from Arlington. James Brown separating from the line of scrimmage. You know, one thing he said he was rusty about was separate was taking his five-step drop. Threw the ball very effectively that time. No sign of the loose ligament problem that he suffered toward the end of last season down the stretch. He threw that football with decent velocity to the sideline. Doesn't have the strongest arm in the world, but anticipates better than any quarterback they've ever had here. Matt Davis comes in. Single setback is Ricky Williams from the 33. Brown wants to run the football. He's got room. Ooh. He'll get about 10, and now Brown gets after a defender who drops him. Emotions of an opener. Clayton Baker, the corner, brought him down, and then there was some of that extracurricular stuff. Oh, this is just a naked bootleg. All the action goes in one direction. James Brown reverses out, takes it the other way. 
As you can see, everybody, all the play action goes in one direction. James Brown comes out naked. Finally, it's recognized down the football field by the quarterback. Baker makes the hit on Brown. Brown better get down to that. He doesn't want to take those vicious hits to the upper body with a shoulder pump. Staggered eye, toss sweep, Williams. He can cut back. Excuse me, Sean Mitchell. And Mitchell will get five. Daryl Chapman and DeMonte Cross combined to bring him down. Last year, Sean Mitchell, 1,099 yards rushing as a junior. He's from LBJ High School here in Austin, though he went to Blinn Junior College his first couple of years. Ricky Williams last year had 990 yards. Look at those yards per carry, Drew. That's what's amazing. Mitchell, 6.2. Williams, 6. That's, that's domination at the line of scrimmage when you average 6 yards a carry. Just shy in midfield of the Longhorns. They'll sweep to Williams. He'll have a first down and more. He can go. Williams inside the 30. First down, Longhorns. Let's go downstairs for a moment. Lisa Malosky. Lisa. Well, Ben Adams makes the key block right here, number 79, as he pulls around. He gets the lead block on the perimeter, and he springs Williams. Excellent pull by the left guard, showing good ability to redirect himself in the open field. Well, I promise you we'll get it to Lisa in a moment. Split to the top. Texas on the move, trailing three to nothing. Brown, pump and go, looking end zone. And Adams got tied up with Shad Chris, and a flag came in. Well, what happened there, Drew, is Shad Chris never got his head turned around to find the football. All he did was face guard Michael Adams. If Shad Chris turned around like he was trying to make a play on the ball instead of just making a play on Adams, I'm not sure the flag would have been thrown. They have an interesting philosophy, Dave, Missouri defensively. They have so much confidence in number five, Shad Chris, and his counterpart on the other side, Clayton Baker. They'll play man-to-man -man most of the night against a very dangerous Wide receiver, wide receiver group for Texas. As you can see, never gets his head turned around, and, and as Michael Adams tries to make a play on the football, the interference occurs because if Shad Chris had just tried to turn around and locate the ball, he would not have been called. He had no idea where the ball was, just playing the receiver. Somebody's got to let him know the ball's in the air so he can redirect his head to try to find it and make a play on it. 15 yard penalty in college football, so it moves it inside the 15 yard line. You know, you're right, though, Drew. They, they put a lot of pressure on their cornerbacks because their safeties, in particular, DeMonte Cross, is like an extra linebacker. They vacate the middle of the field, and those corners have to play tough man coverage. Kind of a cross buck to Williams. He's got room to the five yard line. Very close to another Texas first down. Texas starting to get something done up at the line of scrimmage. A little fake draw. Nice pull by Adams at the left guard position. He gets a little kick out block. Everybody blocks down effectively. Seals the inside pursuit off. And once Williams gets in the open field, I mean, you know, he didn't have to make his first cut until he was about eight yards down the football field. And you can't have that for Ricky Williams. That's too easy. Second down and short. They sweep to Mitchell. He'll have the first down, and he's dropped at the three-yard line. But first and goal for the Longhorn. Shad Chris made the tackle. 8.56 to go in the first quarter with Dave Lapham and Lisa Malosky. I'm Drew Goodman. Happy you're along tonight. It's 3 to nothing, Missouri. You know, Drew, it's, it's uh, this Missouri, or excuse me, Texas Longhorn offense has enough skilled people to win the national championship. The offensive line just has to gel. James Brown throwing toward the end zone. That was easy. Derek Scott, the sophomore tight end. Touchdown, Texas. Well, that's 
something the Longhorn coaches said they like to do in goal line situations. They throw as much as they run down deep. That's right. They've been very successful throwing the football and play action passes or they call it a run fake pass and basically you have to set it up by establishing their, your running game. Texas did that on that drive. Missouri everybody gets sucked inside to stop the off tackle play. Little shot put toss to the tight end. Phil Dawson. Connects on the extra point. Texas on top, seven to three, with 8:42 to go in the first quarter. So Texas responds with an impressive drive. James Brown hooks up with his sophomore tight end, Derek Scott. Conference football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. By Power Bar, fuel for optimum performance. And by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. We're in the state capital in Texas, Austin. And the Longhorns, eighth ranked in the nation. First time in 13 years they come in in the preseason top 10. They break on top seven to three. And for Texas. Chris Stockton, a true freshman with a powerful leg, will kick off. Phil Dawson, who you saw knock through the extra point, is a very gifted kicker, but he had reconstructive surgery on his left knee, his plant knee, in the offseason. So they're being very careful with him, and they recruited one of the top high school kickers in the nation in Stockton. They wanted to redshirt him, but they're going to use him. He'll, he'll kick deep to Kenyatta Williams or Ricky Ross. I tell you, Lisa Miloski's uh, in the back of that end zone. She better be heads up down there. He may kick it right to her. <laughs> you may be right. We were watching him during warm-ups. He almost hit the new Jumbotron scoreboard. Yes. <laughs> this kid's got a howitzer for a right leg. Well, this one might be returnable. Kenyatta Williams at the three. And he is bowled over right about the 20 yard line and we go downstairs as we promised to Lisa Miloski Lisa. Yeah I thought maybe if I caught that ball that I could take it up the field <laughs> but I'm, I'm not properly dressed for that. Gene Delquist the Texas Longhorns offensive coordinator told us that when the Texas Longhorns offense is in sync they move the ball around that was certainly evident on that last Texas Longhorn drive they moved the ball around they ran they threw the ball and they've taken the lead seven to three. All right, Lisa, thank you very much. There's a scoring drive, 79 yards, seven plays, and Brown flipped it into the end zone to Scott. Here's the option look, Brock Olivo, a little bit of a load option, and he gets about five yards. They blocked the corner there, Dave, with the fullback. Nice, nice block on the option. Uh, lead block by the fullback was, was exceptional. This is the man right here. He's Brock Olivo's best friend, Watch him as he takes off down the line of scrimmage. This man bench presses 400,000 pounds and squats about a million, and he just takes the linebacker out, just cuts him down. Excellent cut by Olivo, who's got great field vision. It takes three or four Texas Longhorns to bring him down. Nice execution on the on the lead block by the fullback. With James and Blackwell at fullback, you really have two extra offensive guards. They're 255 apiece. Honorary Hogs, no doubt about it. Yep. <laughs> And uh, Jones decides that he will uh, let James carry it a little bit. And that's part of the game plan. They want those big fellas uh, happy, so they give him the football a little bit more this year. You're right. A little reward, you know. Throw the guy a bone. He throws a good block. Let him carry the football. Give him a piece of candy. Gray Mosier made the tackle. Sets up a third down and about two. And this is a this is a, a down and distance that favors Missouri offensively. Third and two, your entire game plan is open to you. You can run the football, run the option on the perimeter. You can throw the football off a play action pass. When you gain positive yards on first down, it's essential in a drive. And Corby Jones looked confused. Brock Olivo was standing up in the backfield, and you will see this frequently. Not only with young quarterbacks, but also in openers. So they burn a timeout. With 7.08 to go in the first quarter, we'll step aside. We're in Austin, 7 to 3, Texas over Missouri. Of Texas at Austin, a place that towers in the memory, transforming lives from the very beginning. Classic, timeless, always excellent, always competitive. The University of Texas at Austin, top ranked degree programs. 
Cutting Edge Technology, a community of scholars working to stay a dream ahead, towering in strength and pride, the University of Texas at Austin. Seven to three, Team Musk brought to you by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. And for Missouri, Dave, what do you have? Well, they got a tackle. Texas has enormous team speed at the skill positions, and it can kill if they miss tackles. Very special teams. Missouri has done a good job covering kicks, lengthening the field for the Longhorns. They block 10 kicks in Larry Smith's tenure here and play four full quarters. If they make a mistake, don't worry about it. Go out and continue to saw wood. Play hard. Third down and two. They run option. Olivo. Nowhere to go. He puts his head down. He will not get to the sticks. Taji Allen and the strong safety Trey Thomas got up in the backfield. And Missouri will have to punt. Well, that's, a, that's a great defensive play by the Texas entire defensive unit. I mean, they were thinking option from the word go. The inside-out pursuit was enormous. The run support by the safety Thomas was great. And check this out, Drew. This is not good. This is Sean Mitchell, the 1,000-yard runner for the University of Texas. And he looks like he's done for the evening. We'll get an update momentarily we hope Sebo gets it away Mike Adams is back deep and he's gonna stay away from the punt oh you got running into the punter you get a roughing penalty even if it's running into the punter it's a first down if it's roughing the kicker it's a personal foul 15 if it's running into him it's five but either way Missouri's gonna retain possession of this football and this is very special teams like we were talking about a mistake that Texas makes on special teams Running into the kicker, five-yard penalty. It was fourth and two. Missouri retains possession. Texas trying to come off the perimeter strong. A, a barefooted punter, barefooted left-footed punter, and nobody blocked him into the punter as he tried to take his aiming point, just miscalculated slightly, and runs into the punter. It's a five-yard penalty. As you can see, runs into the plant foot. That's how you can blow a knee out. You have to make that call. And there's no doubt that Hector committed the foul and it's a first down for Missouri Tigers so special teams have a, have an impact once again that roughing the kicker the only question was whether Curtis Jackson had gotten a piece of the football all bets are off if he got a piece of the football but he did not right and so Missouri holds on to it that's a big break for the Tigers I tell you when the weather gets a little chilly over there in, in, in Missouri that that bare foot shoo Mr. Siebel that's going to be uh, that's going to be a tough deal They'll probably put a sock and shoe on there. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I never have understood barefoot kickers. Corby Jones wants to throw it. Pressure from the backside. And Jones will be sacked. He didn't get the football out of his hand. Cedric Woodard, the true freshman from Sweeney, Texas, came off the edge, Dave, and bottled up Corby Jones. Well, one tendency that one tendency that Missouri has, one tendency that Missouri has is to play action pass on first down. And hit the pressure comes from right here. And you'll see as Corby Corby Jones tries to take and he's unblocked. I mean, he better get a sack here. As Corby Jones tries to execute the play action pass off of the option, unblocked sack. I mean, Corby Jones trying to get rid of the football at the end in desperation, but he was already in control. Official ruled sack and he's down. It's amazing how many plays you can make when you're unblocked. I'll tell you what. Second and 28. Jones on the QB draw. And this is well defensed by Texas. Dropped at the 25 yard line. It was Matt Jones. He got maybe three on that play. So it's third down and three farms to go for a first down. Well, as you can see, it's a call play, as you mentioned, out of the shotgun quarterback draw. Tremendous speed. Even the big people running from the inside, pursuing for the Texas Longhorns. Remember, that's a quarterback that can get to the outside and runs a 4 6 40. Excellent job by the University of Texas Jones showing good speed himself at the linebacker position. Now, Dave, with a guy who does not throw the ball that effectively, you need 20 yards, basically, for a first down. Do you throw it or you go conservative? I think you run screen or draw right here, but you know they're spreading the field with three wide receivers, so. Quick snap count, and he's going deep. Jenkins is out there, and recovering on the play was Taji Allen. He was beaten initially. The ball hung up in the air too long. Rosette knew Jenkins had a couple of steps on Taji Allen. 
Taji Allen might be the fastest of all the people in the secondary, the most unheralded. But as you mentioned, Drew, they, he had given up the step, but he closed on the football well. The difference right there, no penalty or anything called there because he, he was just making a play on the ball. Taji Allen's head was turned, making a play on the football just like the wide receiver. Four, two, one on the clock. Chris. Changing the clock. I guess the clock, uh, four minutes and 21 seconds, not four minutes and 18. They lost three seconds on that play. Taji Allen, who is a member of a secondary collectively between Chris Carter, Trey Thomas, Allen, and Bryant Westbrook. They've started 93 football games together. And they are among the best of secondaries in the country. Third down at 24. Here's the option. Olivo. We'll run it out to the 26 yard line, and Missouri will punt it. There's Westbrook coming up on a run support. There's a guy that plays corner that would prefer to play linebacker. That's true. And he can he can really stick some people. I guess the clock because the clock had to be reset, they replayed third down. They replayed third down. Replayed third down. They get an opportunity to replay it. Now Missouri, now Missouri has seen five downs before. Yeah, exactly. And in that time, Coach Allen uh, Smith decides I'll run the option. Sebo gets it away. And Mike Adams, ever dangerous at the 36, can return this one. One of the better return men in the country. Wiggles for about eight to the 46 yard line. And let's get an injury update from Lisa Miloski. Lisa. Thanks, Drew. The Texas Longhorns will be without Sean Mitchell on this offensive drive. They took the running back into the training room right now. He has a bruised left hip. They're not sure exactly what the specific specific injury is, but right now he is unavailable. Drew, Dave. You know, All right, thanks, Lisa. And this was him leaving. And when you have a bruised hip, you don't ordinarily take your shoulder pads off. That's not a good sign if you're a Texas fan. Well, to me, it's a hip pointer. And, and, and you Holding get hit. You get on the return. Ten play. Texas, First down. Texas is going to lose 10 yards of field position because of a holding penalty on the punt return. But Sean Mitchell got hit on the hip, on the hip bone, a little thing that sticks out on the side of your body. And when you get hit on that thing, those hip pointers are painful. You can't sneeze. Cough, move, all depending on the severity of the hip pointer. We'll have to track it. So after the walk-off, there was a penalty on the return. Right, it was it was holding. It cost the Texas Longhorns 10 yards on the return. 36-yard line where Texas sets up. Brown. Good strike to Adams. He loses the football. Missouri's on it. And it was a completion. It's Tiger football. Mike Adams had it and lost it. And Jeff Marriott, the nose tackle, worked his way downfield and fell on it. Chad Chris made the contact. Yeah, let's take a look. You know, you, you get a situation here where one of the keys for Missouri was sure tackling. You can't be any surer than this. Adams tries to run Chris off of the play, runs a little comeback route. Adams times it, catches the football with his hands. Excellent effort by Chris, not giving up, up on the football and slapping his left hand right in there, knocking it free. And great hustle by the nose tackle. Pursuing the play, makes the recovery. Excellent effort by not quitting on the play. That's what Larry Smith was talking about. Don't get your dauber down, make plays. Slot to the top. Blackwell's in the backfield with Olivo deep in the eye. Short side option, Corby Jones, not a whole lot doing. Coming down the line of scrimmage hard, Aaron Humphrey. Texas plays a lot of folks on defense, and Missouri wants to stay fresh, but the depth is better for the Longhorns than the Tigers. There's no question about it, Drew. They're bigger on both the offensive and defensive line. They have more people available to them to rotate in there, and that may uh, pay dividends to the Longhorns in the second half. You know, this is hot and humid tonight. The Missouri Tigers may fatigue a little bit down the stretch. We'll keep an eye on that one. Again out of the eye on second down and nine. Jones throwing as a man. First down yardage to Jay Murchison, the junior from Richmond, Virginia. So Corby Jones with his first completion. Matt Jones ushered him out of bounds well, right at the 35-yard line. Oh, we just saw the biggest improved 
group on the football team from Missouri, and that's the wide receiver position. They're rotating six wideouts now, the Missouri Tigers are, and they're catching the football. Last year, they had problems securing the football. This year, a group of players, five or six, are catching the football well. That time, Murchison ran a nice route to the sideline, caught the ball, and moved the change. You can't ask for more. Jerry Burnt, the offensive coordinator for Missouri, told us last year in the first six games, they averaged six drops a game. That's, what, that's why they threw the ball for 100 yards a game. That's right. Here's Olivo. He's met right in the hole, stood up by Gray Mosier, and then finished off by Trey Thomas, the strong safety. 2.05 to go in the first quarter. Texas leading 7-3. Dr. Pepper roundup. Tennessee second ranked and leading big actually that's a final now over UNLV Florida wins Colorado fifth ranked they win big 12 loaded folks Miami 30 to 7 Michigan wins the Big Ten matchup Alabama struggles a little bit with Bowling Green Corby Jones late pitch to Olivo he breaks the tackle and a flag comes in Chris Aikens, the nose tackle. Well, you may have holding on Murchison at the wide receiver position, blocking on the perimeter. Let's see what the call is. Aikens Look. comes off after making the stop, but this will have to be sorted out. It'll yeah. go against Missouri. And I think it was Murchison, the wide receiver, trying to block on the perimeter, trying to spring Brock Olivo on the option, and he reached out and not only touched someone, reached out and grabbed someone. It's 81 in the white jersey, Murchison. This is where the penalty occurs, right here. That's Mr. Murchison trying to work on the cornerback on the outside. And as the pitch comes to Olivo, Murchison reaches out and sumo wrestles him to the ground. That's where the flag occurred. And in college football, it is from the point of infraction. So this is a big penalty. It was in the backfield. Missouri marches all the way back to right around midfield. Which sets up second down and 24. Oh. And again, Missouri is not the kind of team. Ten yards is right. tough enough for them to get. Well, if you if you go worse than second and seven, you're off schedule. You're not only off schedule, you're off the calendar right here in this game plan. Three receivers, no tight end for Missouri. Oh. Movement and a good job by Appel snapping the football. It wasn't on the snap count, but the veteran center. As soon as he saw Clarence Martin in the neutral zone, he snapped it. That's a free five. Dead ball. Defense offside. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Now, one thing that you have to watch out for, if you if you are barking the signals, you can use your voice inflection. In other words, you can change the uh, inflection of your cadence, but you can't bob your head. You can't move your body. He didn't do that until the ball was snapped by a pal, but. It's a it's a non-rhythmic snap count is what caught the defensive lineman. He can't listen to the quarterback. Watch the football. When the ball moves, you move. Tune out the quarterback in his cadence. So it's second down and 19 now. Missouri hanging in there with the eighth-ranked Longhorns. The latter stages of quarter number one. Jones down the middle and it's intercepted. The free safety Chris Carter, who had six picks last year, gets number one in 1996. He has, that's his 13th career interception. And this guy's a player. I'll tell you, he makes plays all over the football field. And that's one of the areas of concern that Missouri Tigers have. They're running the football well enough, but they cannot get their passing game on track. Overthrows the intended receiver, cutting across the middle of the football field. He was trying to get it to Ricky Ross. And Corby Jones is upset with Ricky Ross. I don't know why the ball sailed on Corby Jones unless Ricky Ross cut his pattern short. And he was supposed to be about five yards down the football field further before he cut across the middle. So Texas has the football at their own 29. Williams and now Priest Holmes. And this is Holmes for a few. Right up the middle. Joe Love, 45, made the tackle. We want to talk a little bit about Joe Love who's a senior captain for Missouri. He is from Del Valley High School right here in the Austin area. Wanted his whole life to play for the University of Texas. Wanted to play in Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. He's finally getting his opportunity. He's a Tiger now, and he's a good football player. He is. He went there as a strong safety, kept eating, kept lifting. Now he's an inside linebacker. 
They sweep. Priest Holmes cuts it back, and he'll get another three or four, setting up a third down in short. David Rowe, junior nose tackle, made the play, and we have reached the conclusion of chapter number one in Austin. And I think folks looking in around the country who expected the Longhorns to roll over the Tigers much closer than they expected. 7-3, Texas on natural grass for the first time since 1968. Leading. And welcome back to Austin, Texas. 7-3, the University of Texas leading the University of Missouri with Dave Lapham and Lisa Molaski. I'm Drew Goodman. There's James Brown facing a third down for John Makovic's team. It's third down and about two yards to go from the Texas 37-yard line. University of Texas, one of six Big 12 teams ranked in the preseason top 25. And last year at the end of the season, four were ranked in the top 10. That is how tough this conference is. Non-conference, they were 49 and 10, I believe, last season. Storyline brought to you by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. Norris had a 30-yard field goal to begin the scoring for Missouri, and Texas came back with a touchdown pass from James Brown. And with that hit, I do not think Priest Holmes got there. Daryl Chapman made initial contact, and then Kevin Ford, the bandit, outside linebacker, finished him off. I'll tell you, Priest Holmes reconstructed a, a knee injury. 1994, he was the Sun Bowl MVP. 160 yards rushing, better than that, four touchdowns. While he was rehabbing, he went from 190 to 210 pounds, put on 20 pounds of muscle, but he is short of the first down. And this is dicey. If Coach Makovic decides to go for it here and fails. Missouri's got a short field to work with. Nice effort. Priest Holmes tries to go airborne. Missouri defensively stays with it. Harold Piercy, the nickel back, makes the initial play, and then it's finished off by his cohort in crime, Kevin Ford. And right now, with fourth down, about a foot and a half to go, James Brown is still on the field. And, well, football fans everywhere are fickle. They love when you go for it. They hate when you don't make it. But yep. this should be noted. Texas, through last year, has made seven consecutive fourth downs. And you have to have a lot of confidence in defense to even think about going for it. You're on 38. Brown gives off, and second effort by Ricky Williams. He got the 220 pounds headed in the right direction. First down, Longhorns. Ricky Williams is just a specimen. And this kid broke Earl Campbell's freshman rushing record, and you're not going to be able to arm tackle Ricky Williams. And that's exactly what is, is, tries to occur up front. You have to get a little bit lower. Eric Douglas that time. Hit him with a right arm up around the shoulder pads. Ricky Williams is going to break that tackle. This guy has got unbelievable leg strength and leg drive. Well, they call him Baby Earl. He's a man. <laughs> the Tyler Rose, Earl Campbell. If you're compared with him, you're in rare company. Blitz package coming up the middle. Brown's got time. Looking for Adams. He overthrows him. And running stride for stride is Shad Chris. You know, Dave, early on, I am very impressed with how the Missouri defensive front, young and outsized, is kind of hung in there against the Texas front. I'm impressed with that, and I'm also impressed with the cornerbacks. Like we talked about through the matchup, Michael Adams has, has tried, tried to beat both of the corners, respectively, deep by formation on different occasions. And both of these young players have risen to the occasion. Clayton Baker. He's done, he's done a fantastic job out there, as well as Shad Chris. Priest Holmes and Ricky Williams split. Adams not in the ball game. Davis goes in motion. They'll sweep to Holmes. He's got the corner. Holmes across midfield. A pickup of 11. Dropped by Harold Piercy. You can tell Priest Holmes has been in the weight room. He's got the guns. He does. He's got loaded guns. Watch number 85 come into your picture. You already lost him, but there was a heck of a crackback block from the wide receiver that motioned down inside. And look at Big Neal. The big offensive, the All-American guard out in front, hucking and bucking like crazy down there. trying to. There's the crackback block right there. Tremendous hit, tremendous effort. Seals the whole perimeter. Look at Mr. Neal up front. 
Just kind of getting his body in the way. Nice effort by everybody up front securing the corner. And they'll have to replay that about four or five times tomorrow in the film, won't they? Absolutely. Brown complete to Adams. He's got room. Adams tripped up at the 11-yard line. The post route, James Brown led him perfectly. Easter saved the touchdown. Well, there were so many things that went well on this particular play. Tremendous protection up front got it started, and right there you see a cornerback that was detonated on. Chad Chris, there was a downfield block that absolutely knocked his feelings loose. Another wide receiver working for, working for Michael Adams down the football field. You help your teammates. Watch this hit right here. Tremendous pop. It's coming. Boom! That's chin strap to chin strap, giving Michael Adams an opportunity for 10 more yards down the football field. Tremendous downfield effort. Now watch the pocket here. Totally unimpaired. I mean, his vision, he can read the classified ads, have a cup of coffee, and throw the football. That's exactly what he did. Let's take a look at it from the very start. Little play action fake, freezes the linebackers. Tremendous pass protection up front. James Brown has all kinds of time to throw the football. And now, no safeties in the middle of the field. All the corner, all the pressure on the cornerbacks. Adams get in, gets inside of his corner. Big play. What an effort by everybody on that Texas Longhorn offensive unit. That's picture perfect. And good news for Missouri. Chris looks like he's all right. James Brown is a guy that had loose ligaments in his right shoulder. Did not pick up a football for six months from January to two weeks before fall camp. You wouldn't know it by the way he's throwing the football now. Toward the end zone is Holmes, dropped just shy. Leading the way, Jay Humphrey. Lamonte Cross and Joe Love combined to bring him down. Texas knocking at the door. And this is where Priest Holmes gets the adrenaline flow. He starts to drool a little bit because he's got a nose for the end zone. Watch the block right here. Now the fullback he gets the thing started, gets it underway, seals it. That's Mr. Williams. Seals the backside pursuit, and then an excellent effort by Priest Holmes. He just makes three great cuts and makes four Missouri Tigers miss. Poor tackle. Top sweep, Williams, and he is thrown backwards. You don't see that happen often. Brian Craycraft, a 249-pound junior playing defensive tackle, needs to put some weights in his pants to... Uh, to really fill that spot up, but uh, Craycraft does a nice job. He's more of a defensive end, but right. again, because Missouri's thin, he has to play inside. He made a good play there. 6'3", 249 pounds. I mean, his game is quickness, separate from blocks, make plays. I think we're going to see the old play action pass again here, Drew. They couldn't pound it in by running the football. Last time, it was completed to the tight end. Let's see if it happens again. Third down. Now Williams departs. Brown throws end zone through the hands of Derek Scott. He tried to hook up with Scott again. Scott had the touchdown in the first quarter for Texas. Easter provided the coverage, the strong safety. Well, if you're questioning James Brown's shoulder, he put some RPMs on this football, probably too many. And Scott never saw, he never reacted to the football quickly enough. He didn't expect that ball to arrive so quickly. Look how late he gets his hands up to make a play. The ball's by him. And, uh, now you got to get your hands up a lot sooner than that to catch it. So Phil Dawson comes on, Dave, to try an extended extra point, 21 yards away. Good snap, the hold's good, and Dawson squeezes it through, and the lead extended to a touchdown. 10 to 3, but a moral victory of sorts for Missouri after the big play to Adams. John Makovic and Larry Smith have been close friends for more than a quarter century. We asked Makovic about his friend. I love coaching against Larry because I know, one, his team will be well prepared, they'll play within the rules, and they'll be good sportsmen. And to me, in college athletics, those are some of the things we ought to be getting out of the game. Everyone talks about winning and losing, but when you play against competitors and you know the game will be played that way, uh, you enjoy it. We've only coached against each other in one game. It was a great game, went right down to the very end. Uh, fortunately, we won that one, and he probably would like to repay us, but uh, we'll try to stop that. That was a pretty good football game when they coached against one another. Illinois, 14-13 over SC. Yep, back in 89. 
darn good football game and Coach Smith would like to reverse the favor and upset the top 10 ranked Texas Longhorns. 10 to 3 Texas Chris Stockton into the football. It's Ricky Ross and he's got some room to the 30 yard line so Missouri pretty decent field position. If you're just joining us they moved it right down the field after stopping Texas three and out got a short field goal a 30 yard job from Mark Norris and then Texas came back with a touchdown and then a field goal just moments ago. Scorney is in the game at quarterback now Drew you know they mentioned he was going to come in and take a series in the second quarter and if Missouri gets an opportunity to, for a two minute drive here before the half Scorney will be the man that will do that. He is the pure drop back passer he loses the football and Texas has it. Well that's not unusual either center and quarterback used to one pair of hands you get a new pair of hands. In the heat of battle. Yep. It's too bad. I, you know, it backfired. And that's one thing that, that Missouri was so efficient in last year, not turning the football over. I don't know if the snap was short or if the quarterback Scornia pulled out too soon, but it doesn't matter. Texas has got the football. And that's one area, once again, Missouri was in the top 10. They finished ninth in the country in turnover ratio. They were plus 11 on the season. And there were only two teams in the top 10 that had a losing record. It's a combination. Scornia pulling out. Appel trying to get to make his block before he snapped the football efficiently enough. Dusty Renfro made the recovery and now a backup quarterback for Texas. This is Richard Walt. And Walt takes a shot going out of bounds Wait. and there comes the flag. Yep. Terrence Binion arrived late. Yeah, he was well out of bounds as you can see right there there's a five yard white area he's out of bounds after this step he's one that's close though he's one step out of bounds that's that's tough when you come in 100,000 miles an hour like ball, Binion was personal foul on the defense it, you know look first like down you, you can't you, you can't stop immediately and it, it didn't put that big of a hit on I can see why the Missouri Tiger coaching staff is a little frustrated on that one it wasn't like he was three yards out of bounds and it was flagrant but you just have to be very aware of where you are on the football field that's a, a costly penalty now Missouri self destructive bad center quarterback exchange and then a personal foul immediately you know the Texas Longhorns have a tremendous opportunity here they have the ball at the 18 yard line leading 10 to 3 Walt is off to home not a whole lot of room you know pick up that thought Dave Larry Smith was telling us yesterday evening that for Missouri to compete to pull the upset they had to score in all phases not just on offense right. maybe make a couple of plays in special teams and set up a score maybe return a pick for a touchdown they can't have Texas taking the football away from them because Texas has more talent at this uh, stage of things though Missouri a far better team in 1996 than they've been in a few years. Yeah if you give Texas a short field you're asking for trouble. This is a great offensive football team. Well five step drop looks toward the end zone has a man catch was made out of bounds by Curtis Jackson nifty grab but it won't count. Now here's a guy that initially came to Texas as a running back. He was a good running back. Rushed for 500 yards, caught passes, 500 yards. He's the other receiver. He missed all of last year with a knee injury. While he was rehabbing, he studied defenses, worked on his route running, became a better receiver because with the, all the attention Michael Adams gets, Curtis Jackson could come up large. He's going to get a lot of man coverage and get plenty of opportunity to perform. Walton continues at quarterback. We'll find out if there's anything wrong with James Brown. It's third down and nine. Inside give, and Williams goes nowhere. Someone penetrated. Number 93, Jeff Marriott, defeated Ryan Feebigger, the center, and slanted right to the football. And Jeff Marriott, the last game that he started was back in high school, Chillicothe, Missouri. I mean, this guy's a redshirt freshman, and due to a uh, Due to the suspension of Donnell Jones for a shoplifting ac accusation, Marriott gets to start at the nose tackle position, and he's uh, he's doing pretty well. What the defensive coaches are doing though is moving the line, slanting them, doing a good job of, of raising Kane up front for Texas. 
Bill Dawson out of the hold of Matt Davis, 34 yards away, straight on. And he parks it down the middle. 13 to 3, Texas. 9.58 to go in the second quarter. The Longhorns by 10. Prince Texas joins the Big 12, and they lead it home 13 to 3. And we get an update from Lisa Molaski. Lisa. Thanks, Drew. I've got a couple things to tell you about. First of all, James Brown is fine. Apparently, according to the trainers, they are just resting him right now. But Sean Mitchell is out of the ball game. Dave, you are absolutely right. He has a hip pointer. He is getting ice down right now. They thought that he might come back in the second half, but they changed their decision. He will not play the rest of the night. Drew, Dave. All right, Lisa. Thank you. Well, you know, playing 10 years in the NFL and you played in the USFL, I think you played in the World League. Did you play in the World League of American football? You played yeah. arena ball. You've seen hip pointers. You know them when you see them. I've had them, and they're ugly. They're painful. It's uh, it's, it's not a pretty thing. You feel like you're about 100,000 years old because you can't move. And sometimes those injuries linger. Yep. This thing is through the end zone. Well, almost. Kenyatta Williams. Nine and a half, nine and three quarter yards deep in the yes. end zone puts the knee down. So Missouri will have it at the 20 yard line. And Kent Scornia, I guarantee you, took a few snaps right. on the sideline after the fumbled exchange. There's a turnover situation. You know, it's it's a double, it's double blame there. Scornia should have ridden the center further, and the center was reaching to his left side. So when you do that, you have to make sure you secure the ball before you take your step because it shrinks the area for the exchange on the snap. So both parties are a little guilty there. And the tailback is now Devin West. Not far as Gump. And they go inside to Blackwell. And he'll have a first down to the 36. Ernest Blackwell at 250 plus pounds, the backup fullback to James. They actually split time. He is the fastest of all the running backs. He runs 4-4-7 in the 40. And you saw his acceleration there. And a nice job up front. Nothing fancy. Just come off the football and knock people around. And they do it pretty darn well. Just a little area block. The guard did pull full and, and lead block, though. Nice little kickout block on the G block. Sent the fullback up the middle like a runaway Buffalo. Double tight end for Missouri after the 16-yard gain. Blackwell gets it back. Same play, and he gets eight. And Brock Olivo getting a breather. He is fine, I guarantee you. They just want to keep people fresh in the heat of Central Texas still in August. Well, here's the big matchup. Appel on Atkins. They do Atkins. They double team him. Center and left guard, double team Akins, secure him, rub off to the backside. Safety. Allen has, or corner Allen has to make a play on him. Scoring to throw. And he has his tight end Lingerfeld. Bill Lingerfeld caught 13 passes last year, and as poorly as Missouri threw it, that was near the top of the charts. I'll tell you what, Drew, the one thing, though, any coach will tell you, if you can get attacked up the middle by the fullback for serious yards like Missouri's done a couple of times in this drive, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. If you hammer the fullback up in there, all of a sudden the option becomes easier to execute. Slot to the top. This is West. And West slides his shoulders through the hole and got a nice gain on first down. Dropped by Aaron Humphrey, the outside backer, who then helped him up. Number 49, true freshman from Lubbock. So many true freshmen, redshirt freshmen on the field, and that is a continuing trend now in college football. And John Makovic, who coached for four years with the Kansas City Chiefs, says this is a trend that is here to stay. We have a man down on the field. It's Mike Morris, the junior left guard he started 17 in a row but to, Dave to pick up that thought because of the scholarship limits going from 95 to 85 a few years back more freshmen have to play Makovic says it's just like first round picks in the NFL they have to play initially and, and we have to get freshmen ready to go yeah in the NFL it's economics first round picks make so much money and their salary cap concerns you have to play them in the in the college football you only have 85 scholarships if they're a good good able-bodied people you got to play them the big fellow working his way off the football field, negotiating uh, the turf pretty much on his own. And this, they're running a, they're, they're running a three-guard rotation here. 
And uh, this is what it's like in the trenches. I mean, there's there's spikes, bodies everywhere, and about uh, three people fall on top of them, kind of turn that ankle underneath. I think the I think the big Brahma Bowl will be back for a little bit more activity, though. There's no doubt about it. Uh, he looks okay. Third down or second down and six. And Scornia with a shoe flying off got the football to West and Chris Carter made the tackle but another first down for Missouri. I'll tell you what the big matchup was Aikens. Aikens is, is, was the concern of Missouri up front. Aikens right here is the nose guard. He's going to get doubled and then they're going to rub off to the linebacker levels. But if they feel they can control Aikens and then an excellent rub off to the linebacker just sprung it clean. I think this is a huge surprise to the Texas defensive staff that Aikens is being blocked that well. Oh, that's pretty good fake. I thought he threw it initially to West. Scornia short drop and over the head. And now a flag comes in. Eddie Brooks it was matched up with Westbrook. Westbrook had him like a glove and then the flag came in. Well, Westbrook has only been beaten for two touchdowns in 30 games at Texas. He's only got seven interceptions. And he's the guy that uh, is the teeth rattler when he hits people. I mean, they're going to call him for holding. He, he got a little bit uh, tangling up the arms and everything, rerouting him well down the football field, impeding his ability to run his pass pattern. But holding defense, 10 yard penalty, first down. John Laurie, our official. And right here is where Westbrook and the wideout are tangling up the activity the, the, the penalty had to occur a little bit further up the football field both plays both plays have both players have a, a, a right to position on the football field. I don't know I didn't see Westbrook do all that much but 93 starts out of that secondary group that's an amazing group best in the country and they are very confident. Here's Blackwell again a lot of room Blackwell wide he could score he got in Ernest Blackwell makes a library at a Texas Memorial Stadium touchdown Tigers and, and running the football just running the football down Texas's throat and this was a concern of the Texas coaching staff was controlling the line of scrimmage not being able to get the defense off the field doubling Aiken center back guard Appel comes off of the uh, the nose guard and gets the block at the linebacker level watch the center and right guard work right guard goes to take Aikens his legs out from under him chops him down the centers at the linebacker no inside out pursuit touchdown good effort in the middle Scornia holds Mark Norris booms it through and Missouri now down by just a field goal 13 10 with 738 to play in the first half. Big 12 Conference Football is brought to you by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. 13 to 10 after the 21 yard run from Ernest Blackwell for the Tigers. Texas clinging to a three point lead and downstairs we go to Lisa Miloski. Lisa. Thanks Drew. You know Gary Darnell the Texas Longhorns defensive coordinator told us the most miserable game of the year is the first game because the defense doesn't know what the other team's offense is going to do. Huh. Tigers fooled the Longhorns in that last drive. Drew Dave. Yeah, they really did and, and they and they fooled them by by earning it the old fashioned way. They just hammered the football right up the gut and you know usually a defense a good defense is solid up the middle just like in baseball shortstop center field. You know you got Aikens and Carter and that time Aikens handled pretty well by the interior of the Missouri offensive line. Two new returners Brian White Curtis Jackson number thirty nine. This is Jackson one yard deep. Missouri good job covering the kick they bring Jackson down right outside the 20 yard line let's pick up that run by Blackwell well the double team on Aikens in the middle Appel does a nice job look at the guard crab blocking to get at Aikens knees and just clips him takes him to the turf which is which is a legal play Appel does a nice job of getting off of the linebacker level and it's off to the race excellent block down the football field that you saw by Jay Murchison the wide receivers are blocking the secondary down the field very very well Murchison could call for holding to nullify one option run by Alivo that time he stayed with it and sprung it for a touchdown James Brown back at quarterback 
for Texas. Adams goes in motion. Brown nearly through the pick. Trying to flip it to Ricky Williams, and Barry Odom came flying up from an inside linebacker position. I think that might have slipped right out of his hands. The way he's wiping his hands together, little humidity. I don't know, does he have wrist? Yeah, he has wristbands on. Looks like as he as he double as he double clutched that, it just slipped right out of his hands as he was trying to release it. Dangerously close to being picked off. That could have been tragedy big time as uh, Barry Odom was there almost to make a play on. Almost slipped into the wrong hands. Yep. Second down and ten. Missouri with a five-man front. They show blitz, they come with it. Texas does a nice job picking it up. The double team on Adams down the field. Well done. They tried that post route. Easter helped out Clayton Baker, and there was no room for the football. And you, you call it exactly right there, Drew. They had a safety in the deep third of the football field. That time, when Adams made the big play to set up a field goal, they were in man coverage with no safety. The middle of the field was vacated. This time, it's a zone. The safety rotates over right into double coverage. Boy, I'll tell you what, though, you're going to turn around, Mr. Easter, at least look like you're making a play on the football. Incidental contact, though, when the feet tangled up and Adams fell to the turf, but threw it into double coverage. Uh, James Brown's going to make a better read than that go elsewhere. Third down and 10. They need the 31. Trips to the near side. Brown under pressure. Now he becomes a running back. He's got a lot of room, and he'll get to the sticks. Ball is loose, and they say it came out after he hit the ground. James Brown improvises and picks up the Texas first down. Well, this is this is what had the defensive coaches petrified. If James Brown starts running the football, and this is what makes a mobile quarterback so dangerous when everything Blake breaks down. A roll to his left, nobody open, nowhere to go, tucks it and decides to run. Total mismatch. Linebacker has no opportunity to make a play that time, or defensive end, that's Craycroft. And finally, Brown is taken out of bounds, but I tell you, he can hurt you more ways than one. First down at the 34. Ricky Williams who is yet to really get untracked and he's tripped up around the line of scrimmage by Paul Schmanke, a redshirt freshman inside backer who's a little undersized, not quite 200 pounds, but he did the job there. This is the old counter tray. Backside guard and tackle, both pull. Guard kicks out, tackle up inside. See if they get, get their blocks executed. Done pretty effectively. There's the kick out block by the guard. The big tackle mm -hmm, turns the corner, gets his block. Ricky Williams up the middle. Nice effort by the offensive line up front. Good job. Didn't look like much. They ended up getting five. Now Fitzgerald in motion. Missouri players pointing at the Texas O line, and we'll get things sorted out from referee John Laurie. False start. Offense. Five penalty. Second down. You know, it's a new rule in college football this year after years of committing sins and anonymity. The referee now can tell us yes. who it was. He decided not to. <laughs> well, yeah, he decided not to, but it was obvious that it was the big fella. Octavius Bishop, 6'5", 305. Once you get that body moving, you can't refreeze it. Once you get that three-point stance right there, you can't move a muscle. You've got to stay in that three-point. You need a tow truck to uh, get it going the other direction if it's headed north and south. There's a slant pattern, first down. Wayne McGarrity in front of Chad Chris, and that was thrown before the break. Well done by James Brown. James Brown is the master anticipator. Three-step drop, back foot plants, fire, ball gone. The ball is in the air before the receiver even turns his head back to find it. Timing pattern at the end of that three-step drop, the ball is in the air. You can't sack the quarterback that quickly. I mean, even if you didn't pass block anyway. Toss sweep. Priest Holmes cuts back for a couple. Gets it across the 50 to the 48-yard line of Missouri. Sean Sundle back up outside backer from Rockbridge High School right in Columbia, Missouri. The home of the Tigers made the stop. 5.06, 5.05 to go in the second quarter. Texas leading 13 to 10. 
I tell you, I'm impressed with what Missouri's front seven is doing, Drew. They're slanting the, the linemen. They're hitting gaps. They're causing trouble up front for the Texas offensive linemen to pick them up. Shift back into the eye. It's Williams, Priest Holmes. They fake the counter tray. Brown, a little throwback screen. And Williams gets to the 44. Damani Cross. Came up and made the play, pointing, pointing to his head, saying, "I knew where it was going." Yeah, and a, a well executed play, but I tell you, ni nice read by by Cross, who is the best tackler on the football field. But the offensive lineman did a terrible job up front, getting out and trying to throw some blocks for Ricky Williams. But I tell you, Cross did a good job of bulldogging the steer and then holding on for dear life till the support group got, got there and they peppered him. So third down and four. Texas needs the 40. Brown, safety blitz, gets away, throws. Oh. Out of the hands. Mike Adams had it between the eight and the three. And James Brown is upset, and rightfully so. He shows escapability in the pocket once again. He shows pocket presence, his ability to avoid, and the ball is right on the money. I hit him right in a bad place. You got to get your hands extended and catch the football with your hands out in front of your body. Don't let it into your shoulder pads. And James Brown is hot. And he has a right to be. And I'm sure Michael Adams will hear about the sideline. Chad Chris had the hand flying in front. Maybe that distracted Adams enough. Mark Schultes will punt it. Ricky Ross back deep. This is. Oh, it's going to be a nice one. Down inside the 10 yard line, down by Carter, the starting free safety at the 9 yard line. So Missouri will be backed up. 3.46 to go in the second quarter. A good one in Austin. Southwest Airlines employees demonstrating once again that you can have fun and still do a great job. When I punch the clock, I'm a working machine. I got boots that do the job, got my Wolverines. One of the things Larry Smith told us yesterday was that openers, especially when you're a heavy underdog, you want to keep it close in the first half, be in the football game when you start the second half. He said strange things happen in openers, and right now his club very much in it. They That's right. trail by three. That's right. You, you, you stay in the ball game in the half, and then you take a couple of calculated risks if necessary in the second half. And Kent Scornia remains the quarterback. He orchestrated that touchdown drive. Again, they give to the fullback, and he runs right into Chris Akins. And when you run into Chris Akins, the play ends rather abruptly. Well, I think Mr. Akins uh, may have been motivated on the sideline a little bit, that he was too soft in the middle of the defense for the Longhorns. There's some strange, some strange things. Look, okay. at, look at the Missouri, what they've done in the, in the, in the decade of the 70s. This is the last three times they opened on the road against a ranked team. And they upset ND, upset Southern Cal. 3-0. <laughs> and uh, upset Alabama back in 75, the second rank tie. Scornia throwing. Overthrow. Oh. Carter dropped it. Oh. He added it to 25. He has one pick already. Lingerfeld was the intended target, but well, that was a, a better throw to Chris Carter. Well, Chris Carter, that's a flashback for him because he, he bemoans the fact that he didn't make the interception in the bowl game against Virginia Tech. That could have been a big touchdown for the Longhorns. This one he doesn't catch either, and now tragedy strikes twice here in back-to-back -back games. Although they're separated by an off-season, you're going to secure the football. He makes that play. It's a backbreaker. Third down and eight. Twenty eight time throws in a crowd again. Knocked down incomplete. They're trying to get it to Lingerfeld. Dusty Renfro broke it up, and three and out. For Missouri. And that drive, all the 
about 45 seconds. So the Longhorns should get good field position with plenty of time on the clock as Tyson King runs off the field well, kind of with a right arm hanging. Yeah, I think when he extended, when he dove to make a play on the football, Drew, I think he might have jammed that shoulder up a little bit when he hit the turf. Sebo to punt. Mike Adams at midfield. And now he's going to call a fair catch. And he hauls it in at the 41. That's a big punt from Vince Sebo. Yep. Last year, Missouri punted the football 79 times. That's a Missouri record. Jason Smith, who's now the backup punter, is the guy who right. got the work out. He got, he got that right leg a lot stronger during the course of the year. You know what? I'm impressed with Missouri, though, Drew. One of their keys to the game was play a full four quarters. If you make a mistake, shake it off and keep playing hard. Fumble exchange, quarterback center. They, the defense, the defense kind of muscles up, holds it to a field goal opportunity. The bottom key, the bottom must, four full quarters. Missouri's playing hard. James Brown in the pocket. He's got uh -oh. out there and a drop football wow. from Adams. Wow. Preseason All-American Mike Adams drops a short touchdown. That's his second drop. That's his second drop. Remember the escape move that James Brown had. There's a penalty. As, uh, as, J as Michael Adams must have had something to say as he walks, he takes his helmet off, he took his walks helmet off, off the football field, and that's a penalty. That's going to cost his team. So now you have a, you, you compound your error. You drop the football, then you hurt your team by taking the equipment off before you get to the sideline. Well, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, 15 yard penalty. I tell you, this, this Michael Adams, you have to have selective amnesia. And when Michael Adams dropped the first ball, you can't let it bother you the second time. No safeties in the middle of the field. He took Cooks. Cooks is cornerback. I mean, Chris has, uh, Chad Chris has no opportunity. And he just drops the football again. Now the penalty is he, as he, he's, he's frustrated, takes the helmet off. It costs his team. You can't throw the football any better than James Brown no just way. did. Twice. <laughs> the intent of the infraction that was put in the rule book was that you don't celebrate by taking your helmet off. Adams forgot it because he was distraught and took his helmet off. But it cost him 15. Priest Holmes will sweep, or excuse me, Williams will sweep, not Holmes, and he'll get a couple to the 30 yard line, which will set up third down and 22. Well, cir circle that play though. Circle that play in your play-by-play -play sheet because it should have been a 57-yard touchdown pass. Instead, it was a 15-yard loss. There's 75 yards of real estate as well as seven points off the board. Is that going to be a huge play in the outcome of this football game? We'll see. But Michael Adams, nobody feels worse than him right now, but he dropped a sure score and cost his team 15 yards. Amazing. And when you talk to the Missouri coaching staff, particularly Mo Ankney, who's a defensive coordinator, he raves about Mike Adams. After watching him on film, he said, well, he's not only a flashy receiver who can run after the catch, he said, this is a courageous receiver who goes over the middle and will take a lick. And he has had two drops back. Texas a first down deep in Missouri territory and the second one as we just talked about was a sure fire touchdown and, and how do you think Adams feels and James Brown McAvick, coach John McAvick, trying to get him get him a little bit uh, composed in the sideline this was the, the potential touchdown pass that he drives I mean he's got the cornerbacks beaten man for man just blown by him no safeties in the middle field and drops the football. Now, James Brown, little handoff to Williams, takes it up inside. You know, it's, now it's third and a million. It was second and a couple of million. Now it's third and 1.5. 1.5, 1.8. Mike Adams back on the field. Uh, I'll tell you, what, what James Brown has got to do is go to him again right away. And he did that. You know, Michael Adams dropped his third down conversion. James Brown went right back to him, and he dropped a potential touchdown. Let's see if Michael Adams is open this time. If James Brown gets him the ball and still has confidence. In. He's at the top of your screen. Flanked out on third down, a whole bunch. And he's got a man open. And nearly a circus catch by Curtis Jackson. Did he make it? No, no, they're going to no. say that he didn't hold on. Well, one, or if he held on, he was out of bounds. One official was just watching his feet and didn't realize that he didn't come down with the football. The other official came up to help. 
you know, almost a one-handed circus catch by Curtis Jackson. He makes a tremendous effort on the football, overthrow just a little bit. He does not control it. The one official's just watching his feet. He goes up, he goes up to spot the ball because he did have his feet inbounds, but you do have to catch the ball first, and, they, and Jackson did not. We got hold up! So Texas with 2.01 to go in the first half will punt. Schultes will hit it deep to Ricky Ross in Missouri. Could get pretty decent field position. High and short, a flag comes in. Ross will return it, and he's erased at the 40-yard line, but again, a flag, a flag came in the from the side judge. Now, Dave, you're absolutely right. Texas has made several big mistakes in this football game. Boy, the one area that everybody's bragging on, the skill people. And the skill people, uh, you know, have had a rough night. It's holding on Missouri. Let's see when it was it post kick or pre kick that'll determine who re retains possession of this football was the holding occurring before the kick was was in the air or was it after. It's being discussed right now that'll determine that that's that's the main factor in this play as to who re retains possession. Holding by the defense 10 yard penalty repeat fourth down. Well they'll move up 10 yards but they'll still have to punt it. Right right here and on the other side we can just see the very edge of it on the other side. You've got your starting cornerbacks going against each other and they're mauling each other <laughs> taking those kill men. Those are the two guys that are supposed to get down the football field and, and cause the most damage and they were absolutely mauled. That's where the holding occurred. The official uh, a no brainer there is he got you know. He, 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 you can't you can't tackle the kill man like that. And, and if you and if you watch the outside guys, the Hawks, the kill man, as you like to it, sometimes the activity goes behind the bench. I mean, they sure. get bumped so far wide, they're off the football field. And now Texas will burn a timeout. 151 to go. 13-10 Longhorns over the Tigers. Drew Goodman, Dave Lapham, Melissa Molaski from Austin. The Big 12 opener between Texas and Missouri. And one of the things that some of the teams in the former Southwest Conference pointed out, with all due respect to SMU and TCU and Rice, that the bottom of the barrel in the old Big Eight was a little bit better than the bottom of the barrel in the uh, old Southwest Conference. And Missouri finished in a tie with Iowa State for last place in the Big Eight, and they're giving Texas, the eighth-ranked team in America, all they want. This place is uh, seats over 75,000 right now. Right. But as as the in, in a couple of couple of years here, this as you can see over 75 five. It's going to eventually be when all, when all is said and done when the end zone one end zone gets uh, completely filled in and they take the track out put more seats close to the field it will be over 105,000 people. You know, to be gonna, able to enjoy football down. There. You know, it's going to be like one of those Brazilian soccer stadiums. <laughs> Let's go downstairs. Here's Lisa Molaski. Lisa. Hey, thanks, guys. You know, you're talking about the stadium expansion. It soon will be 105,000. As you mentioned, part of the expansion, Jumbotron scoreboard. State-of-the-art edition, which cost $3.5 million, 24 feet high, 33 feet wide. Guys? I'm thinking about getting one of those for home. 3.5 million. That's a, that's a great room to watch the movie. Schultes has to jump to uh, pull down the... Snap. Ross puts the knee down as he catches the football right at the 26 yard line. 142 to go for Missouri. A 34 yard punt. They trail 13 to 10. Dave Lapham, play O coordinator. Obviously, Missouri struggles throwing the football. Do you come out and throw it here? I think, yeah, they've got their two minute drill they were looking for. And they've had a quarterback in there quite a while getting used to uh, the playing conditions to execute the two minute drill. That being Kate, Kent Scornia. So I think they're going to put it up. You know, the field position dictates that as long as Scornia is uh, careful with the football, they can move it. James and Olivo. We haven't called Brock Olivo's name in about 45 minutes. Now we will. He's got the football. And he darts, he loses it. Wow. Brock Olivo is picking his spots. And then he got hit and lost the ball. It looked like King forced the fumble. Looks like Tyson King might have been the guy that knocked it free. And Olivo jumped back into the pile. You can see his body contorted in the bottom of the pile, trying to trying to recapture that football. But there's a tug of war again going on. Look at this tug of war. <laughs> 
Texas has got it. Texas has it. On the bottom of the pile, winning the tug of war, Trey Thomas, the strong safety. The 210-pounder from Sugar Land. And, and King put the hit that, that knocked that football free. That's the third giveaway by Missouri. And watch number 50 in the burnt orange jersey come up and put the helmet, ba boom, right on the football. First, he knocked the Levo Silly, a helmet shot, and then his helmet followed through to knock the football loose. And Texas comes up with it. A huge takeaway defensively. Ball at the plus 30 for the Longhorn. Staggered eye. Priest Holmes and Ricky Williams. Brown will throw. Blitz coming. Underneath to Williams. He'll get five. Dropped by Kaljanoff Easter. And there's a Missouri player down in the secondary. And it looks like I think you Chad got, Chris again. You got a cramp. I think you get some serious cramping going on by the looks, by the way he's just straightening out his legs. I don't know though. They're, they're, now they're working on his helmet. They're working on his head. Boy, I hope it's not a neck injury. But the way he was really, really stiff with his lower body, I thought, yeah, yeah. I, I think he's cramping. I hope anyway. Let's see. <laughs> It's hot and humid. Yeah, and they're, they're moving those toes up, Drew. I think his calves and uh, hamstrings that's might be cramping cramp. up. Yeah. Let's take a look at that play again. James Brown throws the ball consistently before the break. He's throwing it on timing. Well, he's got great vision and great anticipation. This time he takes a seven-step drop. Once he plants that back foot, the ball is gone. I mean, he's the whole time he's taking his drop back from center, you can see him scanning the field. And when he hits that final step and that back foot is planted, he knows exactly where he wants to go with the football. And that's a pleasure to pass block for, believe me. And, the play, and we've already got him up off the football field. That's Chris working his way to the sideline. I think the cramps are easing up a little bit, Drew. Now, Missouri, they love to play man to man with Chris and Baker. They bottle up inside with their safeties on the run. Does Texas try to exploit Chad Chris's backup? I'd go after him. It's hot and humid. You're going to keep those fluids flowing, boy. You're going to cramp up in the second half. We'll go on the ground. Holmes in trouble. Now trying to improvise. Holmes. Oh, wow. See him. Who could score? Priest Holmes knocked out inside the five. Oh, on his own. James Brown, the quarterback, in fact, made a block. Yes, he did. But I'll tell you what, there was poor tackling. One of the musts on this football game from Missouri was sure tackling. And watch Chatham, number 43. He should make the play. He's got him corralled. There's a clip right there by Neal, not detected. Priest Holmes changes direction of the football field. James Brown and others throw the blocks. Priest Holmes, Priest Holmes takes the ball inside the five yard line. James Brown trying to lead him. And he just falls on top of the play. First and goal. They'll throw for it. Touchdown. And he gave it back to Holmes. Yep. Let him finish it off. What a huge turnover from Missouri's MVP. Brock Olimo put it on the ground. Texas converts. Yeah, really, your most dependable football player. Got lit up. You got lit up. And, uh, and unfortunately, it cost the Missouri Tigers. The defense took the ball pull their necks and lead this limit this to a field goal opportunity priest holmes makes a great individual effort to set up a touchdown reception by himself the next play phil dawson makes it 20 to 10 48 ticks left in the first half Priest Holmes, a 23-yard scamper. He did it all on his own. I'll tell you, tremendous upper body strength. We talked about Priest Holmes putting on 20 pounds of muscle during his rehab. Chapman just can't get there. Priest Holmes keeps him away with that strong right stiff arm, and he, he discards Chapman like you're shucking an ear of corn. And then he just turns it the other way. And the Missouri defensive football team over-pursues. Everybody is trying to get into the action, and now everybody starts getting their peel-back blocks. Priest Holmes and it ends up inside the five-yard line. And the next play, a little play-action pass. Priest Holmes out of the backfield, totally wide open. Touchdown. And you know, that was no accident. I think John Makovic wanted to reward Priest Holmes, who had to watch football last year as he was rehabbing a 
Agreed. knee injury. Agreed. Missouri, instead of covering Priest Holmes with Ford, they blitzed him. And James Brown lofted it right over the blitzing linebacker's head to Priest Holmes. He vacated that area of coverage on a blitz, and James Brown made him pay. Perfect call into that blitzing outside linebacker. So Missouri, after the turnover, sees a three-point game turn into a ten-point game. Well, I'll tell you, Missouri tried... Missouri tried to stay conservative. Brock Olivo, who you can see right there, they tried to just let him run the football, run the clock out. He fumbles it. Now they may have to run a two-minute drill and, and air it out a little bit. Kenyatta Williams paused for a moment. He'll come out. And he'll tumble over the 20 to the 21-yard line. And there are 43 seconds left in the first half. Kent Scornia back on the field. He has handled things the last three drives for Missouri. And this is what Larry Smith said about playing a perfect game. He said, we're not trying to play a perfect game. If something bad happens, we can't bury ourselves. We need to keep after it for four quarters. You've pointed that out. I guarantee you that will be the thrust of his conversation with his team at halftime. Well, there's no doubt about it. But if Michael Adams catches the touchdown pass, we've got a real problem for Missouri at the half. Ron James, the fullback, dropped by Casey Hampton. You know, Chris Akins is a manhole cover with legs. He's 6'1", about 295. His backup is a true freshman, 6'1", three bills. Yeah, and, and Drew, you know what? Game, uh, football is a game of leverage, and, and you try to get under the other guy's pads, and the low man wins. Well, you're going to have to come off the line of scrimmage on your knees to get under a guy that's six feet, 300 plus. I mean, that, that's impossible. You come off on your knees, all he's going to do is bloody your mouth. So all, all you do, you got to double team these guys. I mean, they're just such a load in the middle. And you don't get uh, a body like that missing meals. No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. No question about it. That'll do it for the first half. Missouri surprising Texas a little bit. They've hung around. John Makovic's team, eighth ranked in the nation. They lead at the break 20 to 10. And the Big 12 opener for both schools. And we go downstairs to Lisa Malosky. Lisa. Thanks, Drew. Coach, a very exciting first half, but I think the Missouri Tigers may have given you a little more than you expected. Well, we knew they were a good football team. Uh, we've made some mistakes, haven't capitalized on them, and have given this ball in some good field position. We, we got field goals instead of touchdowns. But the last drive here, great run by Priest Holmes to give us some score. A look ahead to the second half. Uh, we have to get out and defensively they hit us up the middle with some runs. We definitely have to shut that down. Okay, thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck second half. Back to you, Drew. All right, Lisa, calm, cool, and collected. John Makovic looks like a banker. <laughs> Great coach. <laughs> yep. Texas, 20 to 10 over Missouri. We go to our college football today studios and Randy Sparagi. Randy. The first half has been brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler by head and shoulders because great hair can't have flakes and by discovery channel explore your world a competitive first half eighth ranked texas leading missouri and lisa Malosky is down on the field with the head coach of the tigers larry smith Coach, a great first half. The Missouri Tigers outrushed the Texas Longhorns. A great performance. You had to be very pleased. Well, we, we played really hard, but those turnovers really hurt us. We eliminate those turnovers. It's a different ball game, but it's still, uh, we're right in it. And, uh, we just got to go out and play our butts off and uh, do a job. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck second half. Back to you guys. All right, Lisa, thank you. And that's exactly what they wanted to be, right in it to begin the second half. They would have preferred, obviously, to be down by three, Dave Lapham. They're down by 10 instead. Let's take a look at some of the pictures from the first half. Middle second quarter, Ernest Blackwell, the 250-pound fullback, got his pad squared, made a 21-yard jaunt to the end zone to bring the Tigers within three, 13 to 10. Well, and Texas was frustrated. Yeah, they were, and, and uh, Texas tries to answer, and Michael Adams doesn't control the football. Long pass down the middle, he's got the cornerback beaten, safety's nowhere to be seen. No catch. Big play opportunity not executed by one of the tremendous skill players. Priest Holmes then comes back, though, and he answers the challenge. Look at the stiff arm here, Drew. This guy's got long arms, and he's got tremendous musculature in his upper body, and he just threw Chapman around like he weighed 70 pounds, reversed his field, 
and he, he takes it all the way down inside the five yard line. The Missouri Tigers over pursuit. Texas starts to get the peel back blocks. Priest Holmes tries to pick up his quarterback, James Brown, to throw a touchdown pass. Ultimately, the play goes inside the five yard line to set up his own touchdown the next play, Blue. Not bad, Dave, when you lose Sean Mitchell for the ball game with a hip pointer and you can bring in a Priest Holmes. You're right, the depth. You know, Sean Mitchell, let's talk about some of these skill players. And man, is the weather going to get nasty here, Drew? The wind's blowing in. I don't see Annie M. I don't see Toto. And I'll tell you what, but the wind is whipping. I, hey, I, hey, you know what, big fella? You might have to grab onto me. I'm telling I'm tell you, the, the flying nuns want, up here. I, I don't want to blow away. Man, it's a swirling wind. There's thunder and lightning. We can see lightning on the horizon. They may, There's going to have to be somebody to hold the football in this kickoff. Now, if Carter gets blown over by the wind, if the wind blows the holder over, we better get the heck out of here. I'll tell you what. Yeah. It is picking up. And the goalposts are really taking a beating right now. Oh man, this thing is going to be nasty. They say there's rain and hail. This new field is going to be tested. This new grass field with the computerized pumping system is about to be tested big time. Missouri will get the football. Kenyetta Williams and Ricky Ross deep. That's Ricky Ross, number four. To his right is Williams. 20 to 10, Texas. Drew Goodman, Dave Lapham, Lisa Molaski. Amazing. Carter has to hold the football. The football will not stand up on the tee on its own. And Chris Stockton telling Chris Carter, I like it just so. You know, kicker's very particular how they want the ball. I just got a feather up here in the broadcast booth. Uh, the birds are taking a beating up top. I'll tell you what, there's, new, there's papers floating around. The lightning's getting close, and we're going to get hammered here, boys. It's not a good night to fly, even, I guess, for a bird. Kenyatta Williams, uh, that got picked up in the breeze, I'd say. <laughs> Flew right screen. through the end zone. <laughs> Let's take a look at the Southwest Airlines Team Moss, brought to you by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. Well, there you can see what, what Missouri wanted to get done, their keys to the football game. And here's what happened. 64 yards after the hit for half isn't all that bad. Texas really didn't get a long return in the kicking game, and... One half down, one half to go, playing with full intensity. Not too bad. I'd give it a passing grade for Missouri. The big key, though, turnovers. Missouri gave the football up too many times in critical moments. And Corby Jones back at quarterback after watching Kent Scorney in much of the second quarter. Devin West, the tailback, and they're going to throw it. And that is complete to Rosetti Jenkins, who they need to get involved. Jenkins is a dangerous wideout. And by the way, for Missouri, we talked about how their wide receivers had improved. They needed to improve their passing game. Dave, that's just the third completion of the ball game. Yeah, that's ugly. Uh, they only had 17 yards passing in the first half. You know, they rushed for about 120, I think it was. 128 yards rushing, 17 passing. That's not the balance they were looking for. But you're right about Jenkins. When he was a sophomore, he set a school record with 40 catches. And the rain starting to come down. Second down and six. Jones runs the option. And that was well played by Dusty Renfro. And look at this. Lisa Malowski, take cover. If you're wondering what it's like down here, take a good look. It is coming down right Whoa. now hard. You know, if the lightning starts, guys, I may have to take a quick break because I don't want to be electrocuted. It could get nasty, but the one good thing is that this field should be able to take a lot of rain. As they said, five inches of rain an hour. The computer will kick in the pumps as soon as it's needed. So the field should be okay. Back to you. Hey, Lisa, I like the parka, if that's any consolation <laughs> to you. Well, thank you. Lisa looks good in any attire, you know? I'm into that. Third and short, and I don't know. Tyson King stepped up, and Devin West needed to get about a foot and a half, and if he got it, that's all he got. You know, Drew, it's raining sideways right now, and remember in the NFL on a Thursday night game, they canceled a game early with the Chicago Bears and the Kansas City Chiefs. They won't cancel this game, but if the lightning and thunder become a problem, particularly the lightning, this game may be suspended for a little while due to the safety of the players. I mean, this is amazing, like it's a monsoon right now. A torrential downpour, and it was a clear evening when we started. 20 to 10, 
Texas leading Missouri. Brock Olivo can't hear the snap count. Now all kinds of confusion, and I don't think he got it off before the play clock expired. Well, there were men in motion, two backs moving at the same time. The fullback broke his stance. It's going to be a legal procedure. Well, it was a legal procedure before the play clock expired, as you explained. And there's only one guy out there, I think, who's enjoying this, and that's number 27, Brock Olivo. He thinks it's a sunny day still. I'll tell you, look at this. Our men are working overtime under adverse conditions. Those are the true heroes of this broadcast right there. And our Lisa Miloski on the field and the camera people that are exposed to this terrible weather. And Lisa's running about a, a 4 4 40 into the locker room right now. <laughs> and I don't blame her. Man. First down at 15. Olivo behind Blackwell. And again, movement up front. And not only is the field turning sloppy, the play is sloppy. Well, you know why? The crowd is getting into this. It's like a bunch of little kids in a rainstorm. They're screaming, yelling, cheering. The, 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 the crowd level, noise level has gone way up, and they can't hear the snap count. It's amazing the way that this is the biggest excitement the crowd has had is this, uh, is this adverse weather over here. School started a couple of days ago. And I'd imagine there's some students that are feeling no pain right now. Uh, I'll tell you what. And, and you talk about turnover problems in the first half. Man, that's a slick pigskin right now. Who holds on to the ball is going to win this. Olivo hammered at the line of scrimmage. As soon as he touched it, Dusty Renfro gathered him in. Renfro, the sophomore from Alvarado, Texas. You know, this. I think this weather really favors the defense. Because offensively, you have to handle the ball. You have to, you know, the, the, the rain is, is belting right into the quarterback's face. He can't see. The center has to make sure of the snap. All the defense has to do is react and knock people around. I think this really favors the defensive football teams in this half. Second down and 20 for Missouri. At their own 20. Slot to the near side. Straight ahead to Olivo, and he's going to do well to get near the line of scrimmage. Dwight Kirkpatrick hit him first, finally wrote him down. He got a little help from Trey Thomas, the senior strong safety who has been everywhere on the football field tonight. Well, I'll tell you, Texas, the interior of the defense is really solidified. And that time, they just made Olivo bounce it to the outside. Nowhere to go between the tackles. They made it bounce, and, and Texas has so much team speed, their inside-out pursuit was dramatic on that play. This storm is unbelievable. Oh, it's awesome. Third down and 20. From our vantage point, we can barely see the players. Oh, it's Here's an option. I don't know if you want to pitch it. They put it on the ground. Olivo scoops it up like a shortstop and gets two yards. And now... The adventure may continue as Missouri tries to punt into that win. Oh, uh, it, really, it could be a boomerang punt. I mean, you might want to squib punt the football. Olivo, he's the pitch man, and the ball never got there. I mean, that's a great play. He's like a shortstop fielding the short hop. I can't say how strong a play that is for him to pick up that football and first stride off that wet turf so effortlessly. Jason Smith will punt it. First time he's been in the game tonight. Low snap, he drops the ball. He has to hurry it away, and it's not a good punt. It's a horrendous punt under difficult circumstances. Texas will set up shop deep in Missouri territory. Oh, baby. The Longhorns <laughs> leading by 10 in a hurricane. Well, with the weather comes communication gaps, and they kept playing while we were away. Two plays in Texas, got a big run from Ricky Williams to get to the 20. First and 10, James Brown scrambles for a couple before he was gathered in by Steve Erickson and Jeff Marriott. Second half brought to you by Pringles. So fresh, once you pop, you can't, you can't, you can't stop. By the new Coors Light, wide mouth can tap the Rockies with a smoother pour. And by Sitko, just get up and go. Sitko says go. And Ricky Williams going to the 11-yard line. Close to another first down. 
Damani Cross made the tackle, but too far down the field. Well, this is the Pete Rose special right here. A little belly slide by Ricky Williams as he lunges forward to get every yard he possibly can and picks up about another five yards on the slide. Now they're going to move the ball back, obviously. He doesn't get all that yardage. But that's it. You might as well. That's a futile effort there. As soon as you put the ball down, it's drenched. Amazing. Third down and a couple. William, see ya. Touchdown, Texas. Ben Adams, a nice block at the point of attack, and Ricky Williams untouched into the end zone. I'll tell you, Texas' offensive line, the size advantage, really took over in this poor weather. And they sealed everything down. Big Adams comes pulling around the horn as a guard and just engulfs at the linebacker level. Ricky Williams, one-on-one, -on -one, arm tackle, no go, touchdown. Just an amazing effort up front by Texas offensive line that's kept Missouri out man now with this bad field condition. Bill Dawson, whoa, I was one of those, one of those skulls uh, sandwiches when it got through. 27-10, Texas in a rainstorm, now up 17. Watch the left guard come out, turn it upfield, make the key block, Rick Williams gone. Great effort. And as the kick comes in, Kenyatta Williams had to go to his knee to field it. And the NFL, you can get up to keep running back to college football. So Missouri playing into this rainstorm, back up with his line. Oh, a great effort, uh, intelligent move to squib kick. This is an intentional squib kick. And get the thing as wet as you possibly can, skipping along the turf. One, two, three. Now the thing's drenched. He has to take a knee to secure it so it doesn't go between his legs. He's down right there. Excellent strategy by Texas, particularly with the wind in Missouri's face. This is like a uh, scene out of Caddyshack. Oh, baby. Corby Jones, the quarterback, to the fullback straight ahead. It's Blackwell for a couple. And you know what else becomes more difficult? The exchange between the center and the right. quarterback. And I'll tell you, you know, I, I play, when I play center and weather like this, I use two hands to snap the football. And he, uh, Appel is using one hand and still controlling it and getting it up well enough. And right now, They're John Loria is talking about Delaying the game Delaying like that. The game. That's it. Look at the look at the rain draining off of the upper deck. I mean, the lightning is key. The fans don't want it to stop because Texas has got the full advantage right now, Drew. Missouri, the wind is in their face, the rain's in their face, but they're going to delay this game. And they're going to send uh, the teams back to the locker rooms. And, and you know what? The fans who don't want to delay the game might not have all their faculties right now. Yeah, yeah, you just, you don't want, you don't want to risk anybody's health out on the football field. Any player, it, more fans. It, it's not just... By 17, a rain and lightning delay in Austin. 
With Lisa Miloski, who's undercover somewhere. Yes. I'm Drew Goodman with Dave Lapham. We are sitting to storm out, and we apologize for any video or audio problems you may be having. Obviously, when you have a storm like this, it affects things technically as well. Dave, how's the family? Back to Austin, Texas. Drew Goodman, Dave Lapham, Elisa Miloski. We're going to play football again after a delay of more than 45 minutes. Texas leading Missouri 27 10. The light show continues, but fortunately, it is now off in the distance. This is how difficult the circumstances were at the start of the third quarter. The University of Missouri facing a downpour and wind gusting of 50 miles an hour in their face. Jason Smith trying to punt the football. First he had to pick it up. I mean impossible to hold that ball off the side of his foot. It went about 15 yards and that set up Texas in great field position and they were able to get a 12 yard touchdown run from Ricky Williams to extend a 20 to 10 halftime lead to 27 10 and, and, and here ben, is Ricky Williams and Ben Adams 79 out in front a great lead block he just engulfs the linebacker level and Ricky Williams busts it for a big lead and boy it's amazing how the coin flip and weather conditions became such a huge factor it was a perfect snap from the deep snapper Hunter couldn't control the grease pig and that led to the shank punt. A lot of people on the crew day very disappointed in Lisa Miloski because uh, she was nowhere to be found once the rains came in. And we're going to get a little update now from Lisa as to what she was doing the last 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, Please. you're wondering where I was. Well, I was underneath hiding from the lightning since I am plugged into a lot of different things down here on the field. <laughs> oh, you coward. Oh, I, I was very cowardly. But I did talk to Sean Mitchell, who was underneath. Uh, of course, he won't be playing in the second half uh, with that hip pointer. He told, I said, Sean, you must be very disappointed that you can't finish out your first game and he said well I'm disappointed but he said but you know with the rain and everything so <laughs> I don't think he minded missing the rest of a uh, well we shouldn't have a lot of mud but it will be very wet on the field I also talked to Gary Darnell the defensive coordinator he was walking in they were soaking wet and he looked at me and he said Lisa how many football games have you been to have you ever seen anything like this and let me tell you guys I've been to many many football games as you know my father's a football coach so I've seen many nothing like this uh, I, 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 nobody seen anything yeah. like this <laughs> by, by the way Lisa Dave and I noticing that your hair is very dry and also oh. those, those very fashionable <laughs> shoes you're wearing yes. which I have to get a pair I well, don't know if they have them in your you size guys, a lot of people have been asking me how I've been protecting these shoes and I'm going to tell you they're my favorites and I'm a little bit ticked off <laughs> that they're soaking wet but I'll tell you what I've got someone more important here to talk with Doug Wilson who's in charge of keeping this field high and dry Doug I'm telling you is this a test or is this a test how did everything hold up well I think right now we're in pretty good shape we've uh, you know the vacuum pumps have been running we, we don't have really any standing water anymore and I think uh, you'll see they'll have pretty good footing I think we'll be in good shape you know I talked to a couple players underneath and they told me that this is nothing new they've been getting downpours like this all week long so you guys were prepared yeah the two times that they've come out here it's rained you know extremely hard so they're used to it and uh, I don't think you'll see any kind of problems with their footing or anything thanks a lot Doug thanks for joining us and keep this field dry all right thanks. All right. Hey, hey Lisa I don't know if you can oh, still hear I'm us sorry I can hear you okay did the players change their footwear? Okay, I'm going to ask Doug, do you know if the players ch change their footwear? Have you seen them come back out? Do they need to? No, I, I don't think, they, like, this field won't be much different than what they just left from. Uh, it's just a little bit more damp, but uh, there's really no standing water on top or anything, and it, it, it you know, it, it's designed for this, you know, for this special occasion. It's designed just to do this, so I, I think they'll be fine. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Doug. Okay, Lisa, guys, there we go. Lisa, saw. one more question, yeah. or one more comment. You still have that athletic ability. You were running a 4 4 40 out of that lightning. You still have the quickness, there's no doubt about it. I certainly do. And let me tell you, I'm not going to tell you what my fastest time was, but I broke my record yes. in the 400. A personal record, yes. That's right. Hey, Lisa, thanks. Okay, we'll be back. You got it. 7.59 left in the third quarter. Again, Texas at home, leading Missouri 27 10. Now, when we left you almost an hour ago, it was second and eight for the Missouri Tigers at their own 11 yard line. And again, the biggest difference in this football game, and granted, Texas was up by 10, but Missouri got the worst of the weather. Right. There's no doubt about that. Uh, as we said a couple of times, the fact that Texas could decide 
with because of the coin flip to start the game they could decide what end zone to defend they took the wind and the rain at their back put both in Missouri's face and it ultimately extended their lead in the football game mother nature played a huge huge part in the third quarter of this football game yes it did well here we go after the rain delay Missouri Texas back on the field we had 70 plus thousand to begin and many are filing back in and the amazing thing is during the rain delay there were very few taillights in the parking lot yep I think, I think some people might have gone to their cars for protection from the rain but they're coming back into the stadium none, none of them left the ballpark second and eight at the 11 Corby Jones is the quarterback Devin West and Ernest Blackwell the fullback two tight end formation West gets maybe two yards dropped by Tyson King the leading tackler for Texas the last two years officially a 48 minute weather delay well you know what drew this proves to me with the uh, improved technology of these grass fields with these vacuum pumps and everything there is no reason to have artificial turf anymore the biggest reason to have them was to be able to play under those weather conditions they perfected grass fields get rid of all the artificial turf fields I second that third down and six Jones on a long count Ooh. and West hauls it in and may have gotten enough for the first down but boy did he ever pay for that reception Tyson King delivered a blow but enough for the first down yeah the ball was uh, was nice touch on the football threw it right between two defenders he didn't really string his receiver out he threw it in stride where the receiver could catch the football and, and absorb the hit put it right in West's belly so he could get to protect himself immediately from that sandwich shot actually Westbrook had the bigger hit Tyson King got him from behind straight ahead West bit of an opening straight ahead for seven or eight good job by that Missouri front led by center Russ Appel Aaron Humphrey finally made the tackle second down and a couple for Missouri the day was 620 to go in the third quarter Missouri out of this uh, I don't think they are with these weather conditions I mean still the field is a little slick you know what the, my biggest concern drew for the players 48 minute delay three minutes to warm up those muscles aren't warm yet I hope we don't have any injuries out here Corby Jones gives to the fullback Blackwell will have a first down of the 31 yard line Chris Aikens the big junior from Paris Texas the nose tackle right about 300 pounds brought him down you know one one thing that still is is critical in this weather condition even though the, the rain has stopped the field's a little moist good snap by Appel and he gets into his block on Aiken I'll tell you what Appel is uh is going to get some some nod as an all-conference center based on the way he's playing against Aikens tonight at He's, he's handling the snaps well and executing his blocks. And he gives away 40 pounds. Jones on the option. Gathered in by 95. Gray Mosier. Also Tyson King in the neighborhood. And the ball came loose late. But the official points the way of the Missouri Tigers. Well, Missouri still, still, are, still are making a, more gains in the ground attack than they are in the air. Right here, the play is made. Watch the action. Watch the pursuit. Watch him separate from the blocks. He gets double teamed, separates from the block, and then pursues inside out and makes the hit. Pretty good effort right there. That's good hustle by a defensive end to defeat a double team block and get involved in the play. Nice job, Mosier. Nice play by the guy they call Country. He's a team roper, a rodeo guy. Second down and seven. Jones straight back. Underneath he throws and... Devin West had to dive for the football. And there's a perfect example. That should be an easy completion. Well, you have to, you have to make it easy on your receivers to catch the football, particularly if you go into running backs out of the backfield. 
He doesn't look as comfortable taking his drop, delivering the football, just not as smooth mechanically. Still struggling a little bit, although they say his mechanics have improved dramatically from last year when he completed only 33% of his passes, four interceptions, no touchdowns. Latter stages of the third quarter, third down and seven. They need the 42-yard line. Play action for Jones. Uh -oh. Pressure. And he flipped it again in and out of the hands of Devin West. So Missouri will have to punt the football to Texas. Now this is where it gets a little bit dicey. The kicking game, you have to have a good deep snap. The football still will be a little slick. We saw as we came back from the half in the, in the torrential downpour, couldn't handle a perfectly good snap. Sabo will probably handle this one a lot more easily. And then securing the punt uh, as a return man is important also. Vince Sebo pressure coming and blocked. That'll be a touchdown for Texas. It's Westbrook. Bryant Westbrook, the big play man. The All-American candidate. Well, what Westbrook did and the, and the Texas coaching staff decided to try to make a big play on special teams. That was a must in the football game for Missouri. They could not give up a big play in the teams. Right here is where Westbrook, he was out as a kill man. And he worked his way back in, rushed, blocked the kick. He, he just left his, his kill man on the perimeter. Westbrook came in clean. Initially, he lined up on the kill man, came in unblocked, peeled it right off the punter's foot for a touchdown. And he got the room service hop. Bryant Westbrook gets nope. in the end zone, and Phil Dawson missed the extra point. So it is 33 to 10 and Westbrook celebrating on the sideline his original intentions were to was to leave Texas after his junior year go to the NFL he decided to come back for his senior year and he's off to a great start he's had several big hits in the secondary and this block punt finished off with a 35 yard run for a touchdown to create a source of energy as healthy the horns are hooking them 33 10 they extend the lead over Missouri. Chris Stockton will kick it deep. Kenyatta Williams at the 10. And Williams spins to the 34 yard line. Let's diagram this punt block from Westbrook. Well, Westbrook's lined up all the way in the outside of the field. He's covering the kill man. At the last minute, he decides to leave the kill man, work his way inside, and then rush the punter. Now, Sabo, the punter, saw it quickly enough. He could have audibleized and thrown a touchdown pass. Nobody's covering the outside man. Westbrook takes it off his foot, gets a gracious bounce, and takes it into the end zone. They rolled the dice, and they came up big, big winners. 34 yard line Jones Blackwell and West behind him in the eye. Now Missouri really has to play catch up. And the ball was tipped and never did get to Bill Lingerfell. Let's visit with Lisa Miloski. Lisa, what do you have? Thanks, Drew. You know, when I talked to the ball players during that rain timeout, they told me, as I mentioned before, that they have practiced in this rain all week long. And they said when it first started raining, they all got really pumped up. Well, it's evident they're pumped up again. They feel they have the advantage right now. Well, they certainly have the advantage being up by 23 points. And for Missouri, they're forced to do something they don't do well, throw the football. That's right, play catch up. Corby Jones, nothing doing on the option. Anthony Hicks stepped up and made the play defensively. Well, what's going on now is Texas is just pinning their ears back and getting up the football field. They feel that Missouri's going to have to throw, so they're in a very aggressive posture in the running game also. Just get up the field and disrupt. And they're making plays in the backfield. I mean, that time the line of scrimmage was reestablished backwards. Missouri didn't capture it at all. Texas got all the penetration and disruption. Third down and nine. About nine and three quarters. Jones throwing, and I think he's going to be short of a first down. Rosetnew Jenkins 
I give him a more favorable right. spot where he caught the football. Dwight Kirkpatrick drove him back. It'll be close with this spot. You know, it, it, it's good to see Missouri be able to execute on third and long, though. Run a route and complete the football. I mean, that's a step in the right direction because last year they were so one dimensional. They ran the ball for over 200 yards a game, barely threw it for 100 yards a game, and they get the first down. And that was a good throw by Jones. He set up and he delivered it with authority. What you got going on here is Texas, by, by call of the defense, they gave a cushion. It was third and long. Westbrook is in his own defense. He gives a tremendous cushion for the receiver to utilize. He finds the seam of the zone between the corner and the safety. The ball is delivered in a timely fashion and secured well. It's still West at tailback. He gets the call. Nifty move to get about three. Let's take a look at the numbers for Missouri quarterbacks throwing the football. Corby Jones four for nine. Scornia one for three though he did lead Missouri down the football field. He spent most of the time handed off to Ernest Blackwell who scored from 21 yards away. But again they they have to be more productive in this portion of the game. They have to get greater balance. Larry Smith knows it. No question. The offensive unit knows it. Scornia had that key center quarterback exchange problem too. Here's Rosette New Jenkins. He has the ability to make you miss. That was a first down across midfield to the 45 of Texas. Third catch for Jenkins. Now bear in mind that Jenkins, his sophomore year, had a 40 catch season, and then he got in, he got injured last year, and it really hurt the Missouri Tiger offensive passing attack. The leading receiver on the football team was Brock Olivo out of the out of the backfield, and Drew. Where is Brock Olivo? There he is on the sideline. He has not played much tonight. And this is not by design to not have him play much, but they want to work Devin West in there, not only because West has ability, but they want to keep Olivo rested. And there is Devin West running for about 10 yards. Inside the 35-yard line, he should have another first down. Chris Carter, the free safety, dropped him along with Tyson King. Well, a good call because the Missouri coaches realize that Texas is just teeing off. And Missouri, they figure more Missouri is in a, in a catch up frame of mind. They run the draw. And the Texas defensive linemen are up the field pass rushing, and the ball is in the fullback's belly underneath them before they can recover. It's a nice pickup by the fullback for a first down. Again, out of the eye, it's still West and Blackwell. Play action pass. Jones gets it away. Jenkins breaks uh -oh. the tackle. He can run. To the 15-yard line, Missouri moves the chains again. Chris Carter downfield made the stop. Fourth catch now for Rosette New Jenkins. I think it was Taji Allen that missed the tackle. And, you know, it's, what you look for is the old yak, yards after catch. And the quarterback, little bootleg, little uh, play-action fake bootleg, and it is. It's Allen that misses the tackle. And it allows Jenkins to pick up an extra 12 yards due to the miscue. I always thought yak meant something else. Yes, yards after catch, yak. Jones gives to Blackwell, and he'll pound it inside the 10 to the 7. Missouri having their way with the Longhorns right now on the ground. A buck 20 left in the third quarter. The problem for the Tigers, they trail by 23. Larry Smith a year ago saw his team shut out three times. Most uh, Missouri team had been shut out since 1937. They average just 16 points a game. That was objective one in the spring and early fall to improve those offensive numbers. And they've been a better offensive unit tonight. Jones will check off. Seven defenders on the line of scrimmage. Here's oh, option. Oh. Ball on the ground. And it's Texas football. Fifth turnover of the ball game for Missouri. Clarence Martin made the recovery. Chris Akins, the big nose tackle. 
got in the backfield, messed everything up. Yep, Aiken's got the penetration. He was the disruptor. And once the quarterback was on the turf, he was piled. It was like the old pig pile. Remember when you were kids, you were in a pig pile? Well, Jones mishandles the football a little bit. Aikens strips it from behind. And now everybody, there's about 1,000 pounds on top of Jones. He can't make a play on the football. And the old pig pile takes place, and he's pinned to the turf. And Texas comes up with the ball. How'd you like to have Chris Aikens jump on your back? Serious pile. James Brown hands off. Ricky Williams dances to the 16. You know, he's nifty for a guy 220 plus. He's also a minor league baseball player. He wasn't on campus in the spring. He's a very bright kid. And the last couple of summers, he has spent in the Philadelphia Phillies chain. And they say he is the fastest man. This is not surprising. The right. fastest man in the minor league system of the Phillies. He's got to make better contact. He hit a buck 67 this summer. Yeah, he didn't hit his weight, and that's tough when you don't hit your, your body weight. But they love him because of his speed. I mean, he's a major league prospect because he's got such blazing speed on such a big body. But, uh, you know, uncharacteristically for Missouri, Drew, turnovers. They've been very secure at the football in, in, in coach's tenure, and tonight they're giving it away. They were one of the best in the nation in turnover ratio a year ago. Not tonight. One of the reasons Missouri trails Texas by 23. We begin the fourth quarter, 33-10 Texas. You know, some people in these parts like to have a Jeff Bagwell baseball card, maybe a Juan Gonzalez ba baseball card. Lisa Molaski has a, a unique baseball yes. card. Yeah, yes. Ricky Williams. And what do you know, this may be a collector's item. And look what happened in the rain. Oh. It came apart, but what do you know, I've got a spare. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, I'm keeping this one, too. Let me tell you, you know, he plays, you mentioned baseball. The Philadelphia Phillies drafted him in the eighth round last spring. He batted 239, played for the Class A Piedmont Bowl Weevil. So he is a double team kind of a guy, great ball player. But we're going to take him back to the football field. All right, Lisa, 239 is rookie year, and as Dave and I mentioned, 167 last year. Mayor Payne is education. The yeah, Phillies. Yeah. James Brown scrambles out of trouble. He's got a real estate to the 33-yard line. Chased out by Joe Love. Well, there's a whole bunch of family in attendance, and I guarantee you they are still here despite the weather. No question about that. And you want to see some jackhammer feet? Watch how quick. James Brown's feet are separates from the line of scrimmage. I mean, he's moving gangbusters. This is super slow mo. Rolls to his left, nowhere to go. Now he decides, defensive lineman chasing me. I'm going to run faster than I can. He's picking him up and putting him down. I mean, he's up on the toes, up on the balls of his feet. This guy can run. He is a double threat. He hands off to Williams. And the baseball and football player swivels for six, but a flag came down. The umpire threw it, and that generally means holding on the offense. It is holding. And it might have been Octavius Bishop. I, or it might have been inside uh, the, big, the big offensive guard. Holding. Offense, 10-yard penalty, spot now. Ben Adams working against Joe Love. Let's see if the big guard comes out, reaches out, and oh yeah, he reached out and touched someone. He tried to he tried to uh, take his jersey off, and the umpire saw that right away. Love does a nice job though of separating from the hold and still getting involved in the play. Well, our apologies to the Bishop family. It yes. was it was Ben Adams. So first down and 20 after the walk off. Quick snap count. Throwing. Incomplete looking for Matt Davis. You know who hasn't caught a football tonight? The academic All-American tight end Pat Fitzgerald, the 230-pound senior who was a preseason All-American. He's listed among some scouting services as the top tight end in the country. And I'll tell you, he caught a bunch of them last year. He had eight touchdown receptions, caught 30 passes for 445 yards. He was very involved. And the Missouri coaching staff thought they might have to double him tonight. You know, because he's so good over the middle of the football field, they might have might felt they might have had to bracket him. Maybe they have. Maybe that's why he has not been involved too much in the passing attack. Another guy. When you look at their skill guys, Dave, it's an embarrassment of riches. Oh, it is. They, mean, they line up four tight ends deep. 
They line up six or seven wide receivers deep. And Sean Williams goes out with an injury. Priest Holmes has had a big football game stepping in for him. Yep. Not to mention Ricky Williams and James Brown. Second down and 13. Blitz coming. It's a delay. And Williams puts his hat down and gets three or four. Brian Craycraft made the tackle. One of the areas that Pat Fitzgerald told us he wants to improve in is in run blocking. And he released down the football field just a little high. You know, it, that's, that's love again at linebacker, and, and Pat didn't sustain his block as well as he will once he gets uh, his feet back under him a little bit. you got to bear in mind, he didn't practice at all in the spring and very little in the preseason because of severe hamstring and hip muscle injuries, and he's just now trying to round into football shape, and his pads are a little high on that play. Third down and seven. The single setback is Williams. Oh. Brown in trouble. And he gets it away to Williams. How about that? Amazing. It's the old, it, it, it was an improvisational shovel pass. I mean, it was a shot put. Two things come to mind when you look at James Brown. Watch him get out of trouble here and make something out of nothing and give his punter a little bit more room. You know what's amazing? Leg strength right there. He's got a linebacker and a defensive lineman pulling his leg, still gets rid of the ball, Drew. He's a winner yep. based on his 13 and 2 record as a starter. There was one tie in there. And the other thing that comes to mind is when you talk to the coaching staff, they say he's a quarterback who has the ability to run. He is not just a runner when he drops back to pass. Right. And he's demonstrated that tonight. Schultes gets it away. High punt, and Ricky Ross gathers it in. The fair catch at the 32 yard line. 33 to 10. With 12.51 to go in the fourth quarter, Missouri trailing Texas. It's coming. The pulled away from Missouri, 33 to 10. The Performer of the Week is brought to you by Power Bar, fuel for optimum performance. And Pat Fitzgerald has combined athletics and academics. I think basically it's just uh, staying, you know, keeping good habits. I mean, you work hard on the field, you want to get better, you want to get better in the weight room, technique-wise. Uh, work hard and do your things and if you do the same thing in the classroom as you do on the field you know, you're going to take care of business and uh, you're going to get good grades and you're going to be a good athlete. Well, I'd say he had good grades. He had a 4-0 in the spring. He's a marketing major and Kerry Cash who's been a very good tight end in the NFL. He has the record tied with Pat Fitzgerald. Missouri with the football at their own 33. Jones Oh. And he's hit from behind. Westbrook. Loose football. Now they're going to say it's an incomplete pass. Bryant Westbrook again. Coming off the corner on a blitz. Got there. Well, the, fan, the fans are booing. They're wanting a fumble, but his arm was coming forward. He was in the throwing motion, but Westbrook on the blind side came on a cornerback blitz. Same type of thing that he did on the punt. He vacated his receiver and came on the blitz. Jones had no idea he was there, and he took it out of his hand. Boy, it's close, but Jones was in the throwing motion. Watch the elbow going forward. It's, he's in his throwing motion. He swapped, swiped the football away. Incomplete pass, no fumble. Still no Brock Olivo. Kenyatta Williams is checked into the backfield, and in front of him goes Ron James. And this is Williams. He's got a little wiggle to his gait. He gets a couple. It'll be third and eight. Dusty Renfro, another one of those inside linebackers. They don't get a lot of play. Tyson King has gotten some publicity. But with that outstanding secondary, and as I said earlier, the manhole cover with legs up front, Chris Aikens. Right. They get all the uh, pub, but those two inside backers make a lot of plays. Oh, well, they really do. I mentioned earlier the key to success in a defense is to be solid up the middle at the defensive tackles, middle linebacker, and safety spots. And Texas pretty well stocked in that area, although Missouri has done better than I thought they would running between the tackles. Jones lobs it toward Lingerfelt. Actually, this is Jake Stuvey, the backup tight end, and he made a nice reception. Very close to a first down at the 42. He needed to get it right over the 42. Well, Texas plays a lot of, a lot of zone defense. You can see they're in the little umbrella. 
configuration here. Everybody will drop back into their zone. The, the mandate for the receiver playing a little bit soft coverage as Westbrook is to find a little seam in that zone. Runs by the linebackers in front of the safeties. Completion measurement for first down. Stuvey's a sophomore from Kansas City, and you see they're a couple of inches shy. And down by 23 points with 11.54 to go in the game. I don't think there's any question that Larry Smith will go for it. You see a great number of freshmen, sophomores playing for Smith. And there's very few players left from the previous regime. He has recruited speed and more size and they're buying into Larry Smith. He was just given a contract extension right. at Missouri. Both coaches coach yeah. Makovic did as well as Larry Smith and they're good friends and they'll be in the profession for a few more years and coach Smith has taken his Missouri team to Wentworth Military Academy the last uh, three preseasons and, and, and built some some team chemistry. And Jones does it himself. Talk about the leg drive of James Brown and the strength. They're actually similar in physique. They are. I mean, this is an athletic quarterback, uh, but whereas James Brown can hurt you with his feet and his arm, Jones at this point in his career hurts you a little bit more with his feet and trying to uh, trying to improve that technique with the throwing arm. Take anyway. a look at, at little root hogging going on here as, as Akins tries to get up the football field. Appel does a nice job of getting underneath the defensive line, getting a surge forward so his quarterback can cozy on behind him for the first down. Jones fakes the option. He's got room to run if he wants to, and he will. This is the football. Fortunately for Mizzou, it goes out of bounds. Corby Jones got enough for a first down across the 50 to the 47 yard line of Texas. Bryant Westbrook again made the contact. What a ball game he has had. Watch number 64, the offensive tackle for the Missouri Tigers. Stay with his play. Well, we lost him a little bit on, on that action, but he made the cut block that sprung Corby Jones to the outside. I'll tell you, Chris Meredith does a nice job. Take a look at him on the on the outside right here. There's the key block right there as he cuts the defender down and springs Jones to the outside. Kenyatta Williams met in the backfield. Tyson King got there around the same time that Williams took the handoff from Jones. It'll be a loss of three. And there's a player down for Missouri. It is Williams. Well, sometimes you get graded pluses and minuses. It was a plus last play for Meredith. This time starts out pretty well, but does not sustain it, does not finish his block. Defender does a good job of separating from the block. And that's that battle's won by the freshman Cedric Woodard. They like him a lot. He's a player. A couple of young guys going head to head there, though. I mean, you get you get young people in the football game for both of these football teams. You know who Cedric Woodard's cousin is? Remember Elmo Wright. Elmo Kansas Wright, City yeah, Chiefs, terrific absolutely. receiver, University of Houston. Yeah, his cousin played against him, uh, or he played against Syracuse when I was in college. Slot to the top on second and 12. Here's the flip to West. He got a block on the corner. West still going. First down yardage to the 30. Well, I, I tell you what I what I respect about this, Drew, is the fact that Missouri is playing hard. That's what Larry Smith wants, and that's what they get. Good blocking on the on the perimeter. Watch the fullback lead block. That'll be the key to this as he kicks out. Running back turns it up inside. One miss, two miss. Third person holds on. It takes six different players get a shot at the running back on that particular occasion. Doing a nice job of moving his feet is Devin West. First down at the 30. Jones takes another lick from Westbrook. Man, he hits like a linebacker. 
He is a load. I, I tell you, he, he's a physical guy, carries his shoulder pads around that football field with a little dynamite under him, and he detonates it every once in a while. Yeah, a lot tonight. And I'll tell you, he'll thump people in. Uh, his, he takes pride in when the teammates are watching the defense on film. Westbrook, ooh, oh, what a hit. You know, I mean, that's Westbrook. I mean, that's what he's known for, the flash, the big hit, and he and inspires his teammates. Hands down, his teammates voted him the best hitter on the team. He's shown his stuff tonight. West gets to the 20, near a first down. Where is Brock Olivo? Really? Chris Carter made the tackle coming up from his free safety spot. I mean, I don't think, based on what Brock Olivo has done for the, for the university, that, that his playing time has decreased because of that fumble. I mean, you know, there were there were a few mistakes made, and, and I don't think Larry Smith is the type of coach that would, uh, that would decrease playing time over a mistake like that. I don't think he believes in that. Coaches fall over themselves talking about Oh, he's, he's a great how wonderful Olivo is. James, people bouncing off of him. 255 pounds or so is not easy to bring down. He'll have the first down. And for an update on Brock Olivo, the ubiquitous one, Lisa Malas. Ooh, Lisa. Thanks, guys. Brock has a bruised rib. They do not expect him back tonight. And you know, we've heard so much about what a tough competitor he is. It must hurt badly for him to be out of the ballgame, guys. Absolutely right. There's a hill that barely anybody on the football team can run or run consistently in Columbia, Missouri. Yep. He has never been beaten up that hill, so he changed the name. It's now Brock Hill. <laughs> Corby Jones trying to get to the corner. He will not. Pulled down by Dwight Kirkpatrick, the junior from Waller, Texas. Uh, Westbrook tries to get involved in this play. Drops in the zone coverage initially. Makes the run read. Tries to come up and get involved. And he overshoots it. I mean, basically, he sold out into space. He didn't wrap his arms. Not very good form in that tackle, and he knows it. He said, that's a bad one. They won't be ooh and an iron in the film. They may be making fun of me a little bit on that effort. Jones, by the way, tonight, 42 yards on 14 attempts. It's second down and 10. 7.44 to go in the football game, 33-10 Texas. Jones pumps, throws end zone, and tried to get it to Stuvey. And a pretty good play by Chris Carter, the free safety, to break it up. This secondary for Texas is good. The Missouri secondary is good. Kansas State in the Big 12 has an outstanding secondary. Boy, look at all the team speed that, that Texas has. There were a half a dozen defensive players, including defensive linemen, using the sideline as a 12th defender. A lot of people involved there. Texas, nobody's on the ground. Everybody's on their feet and running. And that's, uh, that's pretty good coverage, pretty good defense. Westbrook's on his man like flypaper. He's all over it. Great coverage down the football field. Third and ten, Corby Jones will call a timeout. 7.34 to go in the fourth quarter. Texas 33, Missouri 10. And while Corby Jones walks to the sideline and Brian Westbrook looks for a water bottle, we'll do the same. Back in a moment. Line brought to you by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. Well, we had a third quarter rain and lightning delay. Never seen that before in a football <laughs> game. Saw one canceled in the preseason, the Chiefs and the Bears. We mentioned that. 13 points for Texas off of four Missouri miscues. And Missouri continues to struggle throwing the football. They have a big third and ten here. They need the seven-yard line. End zone shot. Jones has a man, and he just laid it up there too long. Trying to hit Ricky Ross. Tajay Allen was beaten on the play, but the football never arrived. That's the second time that Taji Allen has, has benefited by a ball that wasn't delivered probably the way it should have been. There was enough separation, a little bit too much air under the football, under through it, didn't come off his hand cleanly enough. Taji Allen, really the beneficiary of a, of a poorly thrown football because a pattern was run pretty effectively. That could have been a touchdown by Ross in the corner of the end zone. 
Ross and Murchison come to the near side. Fourth and ten. Missouri has to go. Texas showing blitz. They come with it. Jones, end zone, Murchison. Didn't hold on. They turn it over on downs. Taji Allen, pretty tight coverage that time. Really, that goes in the book as a pass defense. That's nice, nice effort by a defensive back. He timed his collision with the receiver exactly as the football arrived. This ball is pretty well thrown. It's delivered well. Leads the receiver enough. Taji Allen doesn't have his head turned yet, but he plays the receiver. Actually didn't touch the ball, but just disrupted, I guess, the vision enough. Really, honestly, should have been a touchdown catch. I mean, that ball is thrown as well as it can be. Murchison just couldn't corral it. Corby Jones looking for the penalty. So Texas has the football and breaking into the open field is Priest Holmes trying to get rid of the fly that is Shad Chris. And give Chris credit. He gives away about 50 pounds and he hung in there. I'll tell you what, the Priest Holmes used his stiff arm on the big redirection route that he ran to set up his touchdown in the first half. And he knocked the linebacker Chatham down like nothing. Showing some strength here as a defensive back locked under Priest Holmes jersey. Priest Holmes tried to stiff arm a half a dozen times and Chris, Chad Chris had no part of it, wanted no part of it. He looked like a fighter taking six or seven jabs to the head. <laughs> right. That wasn't a stiff arm, that was a jab. Good tenacity by Mr. Chris though, no doubt. If you're just joining us, Sean Mitchell, the thousand yard runner for Texas went out early in the football game with a hip pointer. So Priest Holmes has seen a lot of action. There's a throw for a first down to the 39 yard line. Wayne McGarity in front of Shad Chris. Well, there's an All-American up front, Dan Neal for the University of Texas, who is the leader of the hogs between the hash marks. And he sets up at the right guard position. Look at him lock out. He's basically bench pressing the defensive lineman, and he can bench press 450 pounds, get good feet, squats, separates, sits down. Pretty good job of pass protection up front. No penetration into the pocket by the defensive lineman. Nice job by Neil. He's won the Ironman Strength and Conditioning Award three times in Texas. He was hurt this year. That's probably the only reason he didn't win in his senior campaign. About six yards for Priest Holmes there. The senior from San Antonio. You know, one of the great things about Texas football is you don't generally have to go outside the confines of Texas to load up on talent. There's no doubt about it. Florida and Texas is where you go to get speed. And uh, Coach Makovic has, has got the recruiting lines wide open now, and they're flowing freely to the University of Texas. They are so deep at the skill positions with so much speed, and it trickles down to special teams as well. This is Williams, and Williams shakes free. What a job by Ricky Williams, still wow. going. Wow. Oh, man, what a run. Jeez. That was an equal opportunity job. He gave everybody on the defense an equal opportunity to tackle him, and nobody could. Well, that was one of the musts, as we recall, from Missouri, was sure tackling. And it wasn't very sure on this particular rush by Ricky Williams. Of course, you got a tiger by the tail right here. You can't arm tackle Ricky Williams. And that's what's taking place right there. Kevin Ford's trying to hold on for dear life for some teammates to arrive. Ricky Williams breaks free of that. And then he's off to the sideline for a positive game. Baby Earl as Richard Walton comes back into the football game for James Brown at quarterback inside 540 to play. A little delay. And... Running the football for Texas is, is that Robert Dulhig. You know what happens uh, late in the football game in a blowout? You have some uh, double jerseys out there, guys with uh, the same number. It's uh, Jared Coleman, actually, wearing 29. He's listed in the guide as number 34. So. Jared Coleman carried the football. And he remains in the backfield. Walton to throw. Dropped by McGarity. And 
Now Ricky Williams closing in on 100 yards rushing. He did that uh, a few times last season, and this guy is a talent. I mean, it, it, it's very rarely do you have a guy who is drafted in the eighth round by the Phillies who are paying for his education, and very probably he could end up being a first round pick in the NFL and have uh, a choice to make. We call up Baby Earl, and that last run was a bit reminiscent of what Earl Campbell used to do. People tugging on those old tearaway jerseys. He'd go through about 10 jerseys a game. Sure. Earl was a man. I mean, I had never seen a guy with more powerful thighs, legs, lower body. I mean, he was extraordinary. He ran over so many defensive backs and linebackers that you, you, you don't have hands and toes to count them all. I mean, he was incredible. One of the greatest hits I've ever seen a running back put on a player. The hit he put on Isaiah Robertson of the Rams, who was an outstanding linebacker, just knocked him flat over. Here's Ricky Williams. Priest Holmes in the backfield. Well, and that's a strike. Right back to Brian White, the sophomore from Deer Park, Texas. White. This shows you the depth of the Longhorns a receiver. White is extremely fast. He caught four passes last year. Little play action pass. Quarterback separates from the line of scrimmage and throws a rope. I mean, that's a, that's very well thrown football. I tell you, it, the, the talent just keeps coming and coming. You know, there's they're they're well into their reserves now. Coach John Makovic has got it uh, got it going down here in Austin, Texas. <laughs> Williams bounces. Major people dance. Ricky Williams on the sideline to the end zone. They give him a touchdown. They're going to mark him down at the one. Wow. You can't tackle him. Amazing. He's over 100 now. The last two runs that Ricky Williams has had are probably as good a run determination desire as you're ever going to see put him in the end zone on this one good blocking up front Neil off the double team rubs to the linebacker level he bounces it to the outside and oh run over pancake waffle belly right there I'll tell you you're a defensive back Harold Piercy and you've got Ricky Williams in the open field touchdown well, yeah let me correct it they gave him a touchdown initially they marked him down at the one extra point is good by Dawson it is 40 to 10 Texas. What a hit. This is a, that's a if you're a defensive back you get depleted right there. That's tough. Remember the day when you the player of the game is brought to you by Power Bar fuel for optimum performance and Optimum performance for Ricky Williams tonight 14 trips 112 yards a couple of scores and a lot of yards after the first contact yep. 74 yards of those 112 are after the first hit and there's a good example just depleting a member of the secondary and, and dragging him to the end zone that is one powerful young man Ricky Williams he is made after initial contact tonight 73 of those 112 yards and that's the thing coaches look at well that's yak also yards after contact receivers are yards after catch running backs are yards after contact we got two yaks going on that acronym works <laughs> Ricky Williams the sophomore to think that he's 220 pounds and has the kind of lateral quickness is frightening and I wish I had the hair to wear that hair group. that takes some time yeah that goes out of bounds Missouri has the option to take it on the 35 or force Texas to kick it off again it's been a long night for that young man the sophomore Corby Jones he's made some plays and again early this was a football game it's 40 to 10 now but it was 20 to 10 at halftime and it could have been closer than that Missouri for a half played right with Texas and there he meets with his dad that's uh, that's going to be tugging at the at the heart of, of Mr. Jones the coach the dad uh, you know it's after all not only your quarterback but that's your son that's uh, if, if you're a parent out there you got you got to feel for it. Curtis Jones, the running back coach, and a standout with Missouri in the late 60s, played in the NFL. Ooh. Oh, there's a kiss. Bryant Westbrook, hello. 
Devin West sent to astronomy class. Oh, I tell you, he's instinctive. Sometimes he guesses. Sometimes he guesses right. Sometimes he guesses wrong. This time he closed at just an opportune time, and he threw a forearm shiver. I mean, that's a shot. This guy is a physical player at the cornerback position, a la Mel Blunt with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Scouts have to drool at his ability. Great cover, man, and he'll come up and run support. Heck, you can put him at a linebacker. West, they run the same play. Pass complete to and this time West, West spins free for a moment. He Tony Holmes. Westbrook's on the sideline. You know what? I like that. They come right back to Devin West. He might have said, hey, give me the football again. He was hoping Westbrook was out there also. He right. wanted to return that hit. Yeah, well, that's one thing you have to respect about Missouri once again. There's no quit in the Tigers. Scornia down the middle. Nice throw to the 45-yard line. Brought in by Eddie Brooks. Eddie Brooks a year ago, 13 catches. He's just a sophomore. He's from Blue Springs, Missouri. Well, Missouri's in their two-minute drill right now. Their hurry-up offense. Scornia is more acclimated to running. And he had a corner route going to Brooks, and he overthrew him. Remember, Scornia was going to run the two-minute drill right before the half, depending on the conditions of the football game. So with Missouri trying to play catch-up football, they go to their hurry-up mode. Scornia fits the bill. Dr. Pepper roundup. Colorado wins in the Big 12. Miami hung on after an early battle with Memphis, Michigan, Alabama. They struggled early with Bowling Green. Second down and 10 for Scornia and Missouri. And down the middle, a little bit short of Jenkins. 2.40 to go. That ball poorly thrown, honestly. I mean, Jenkins a little bit better throw. Jenkins has got himself a completion. Scornia points to himself, letting Jenkins know that he should have delivered the football in a little bit more catchable way. Watch as the ball goes down the middle. He's open. He's found a seam in the zone, but it's a little bit low. Although it does go between his arms, it shouldn't have been that difficult to catch attempt. Uh -oh. Pressure coming. Ooh. Big hit on the outside, and they're going to say that's an incomplete pass. Oh, Scornia is hurt. Man. That's a whiplash shot right there. Boudoin, is that his name? Boudoin, or however you pronounce it. I'm not sure. Boudoin. He comes on the blind side. The blitzing linebacker is picked up by the fullback, but Boudoin comes from the backside. That is a whiplash shot. Scornia, that's like getting hit from behind with an automobile, and you can just see his upper body lurch and his neck snap. Boy, he was definitely in a strong motion once again, the elbow coming forward, but boy, that's a hit. That is a shot. Good hit by Baldwin. 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 Sorry about that, Mr. Baldwin. <laughs> Scornia on fourth down. First down at Jenkins. Good throw, good catch. Jenkins running the deep crossing route. Hold it in at the 32. Might notice the M for longtime followers right. of Missouri football is now gold. Used to be white for so many years. Just a subtle change on the helmet of the Tigers. I like it. Yeah, yeah. it looks pretty sharp. Scornia and couldn't hook up with Eddie Brooks. Next week for Missouri, they have a week off. Then they get ready for the University of Memphis. And we'll see him again against Clemson on September 21st. And next week we will be in Ames, Iowa. Wyoming, one of the teams to look out for in the WAC. And the Cyclones, we'll get to see a couple of Heisman candidates. Troy Davis for the Cyclones, Marcus Harris, the wide receiver for Wyoming. Wyoming had a white knuckler today. They won by a couple, 40-38. We got a scare from Idaho. Yes. Out of the backfield, West left the ball on the ground. Texas football. Another Missouri turnover. Uncharacteristic. Under Larry Smith, that they put it on the ground this many times. I thought Danaher, did Danaher cause the fumble? I believe Danaher stripped it from behind. Blitz. The coverage is vacated. Danaher comes from behind and just reaches in there with the left hand and strips it away. 
And Texas Will Goodlow yep. scooped it up. 2.13 to go in the football game. The Horns putting a hurt on Larry Smith's Tigers, 40 to 10. All well, is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. And by Power Bar, fuel for optimum performance. Littlefield Fountain on the campus of the University of Texas in Austin. And the folks will go home happy tonight. UT, the Horns leading the Missouri Tigers 40 to 10. And there's a senior that has uh, waited for his opportunity. He's a backup player, backup free safety, strong safety. He plays quite a bit. Cody Danaher, and he forced the fumble a moment ago. Fifth giveaway by the Missouri Tigers. They only had 18 gives the whole season last year. Five in one game tonight. Here's Chris Butcher with the football. Butcher, a redshirt freshman from Longview, Texas. And this guy's a very talented musician, we're told. Plays the piano and the saxophone like my partner Dave Lapham. Yeah, not the right. violin, though, Dave. <laughs> you know, not quite as versatile as you were. <laughs> violin, that was ugly. I lasted about 30 seconds on that. Coach John McEvick, he's got to like what he sees tonight. I mean, you know, you get a 30-point spread against a football team that was salty uh, to start the football game. Butcher goes wide. Butcher. Bumped out the about a yard shy of a first down by Kaldronoff Easter. And let's take uh, another visit with Lisa Molaski. By the way, guys, just to lead it off, I do play the piano, so we could have quite a trio there, right? That's, that's <laughs> unbelievable. As long as Lapham and I are left out. Yeah. Because, yeah. because musically... <laughs> We're, uh, That's right, Dave. We're Dave not cannot sing. We Le said Dave can't sing. Exactly. And Lisa, I, 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 tried, I tried to play the piano once, but I, my fingers are like hot dogs. I couldn't get across those keys well oh, enough. There you go. Let's watch the play, and then I'll wrap things up. Butcher off tackle. We'll have a first down of the 39. Lisa. Guys, you know, I think one thing to really take a good look at is this football field. It is in remarkable shape considering the rain we had. Any other field, any other place, old turf would have been, we would have been in a mud bowl right now. This is absolutely beautiful. And I think that the Texas Longhorns obviously benefited the most from the rain. They came out very strong afterwards, got pumped up, and there's the score. I guess for a lot of people, this may not be big, uh, a big surprise considering they came in as uh, heavy favorites. But Missouri gave them a good fight. So it was a great ball game. Fun to be here. Yeah, it was fun to be undercover, I bet, when it was raining like it <laughs> okay, was. Okay, rub it in, rub it in. <laughs> uh, just mentioning that. <laughs> Brian White pulls it in. Hey, Lisa, great job tonight. Thank you. Real good, real good job, Lisa. And I'll tell you, she just made a great point. Look at this football field. A 48-minute delay, and there's no turf being dug up. It's uh, it's incredible. They've got this grass field figured out with this drainage system, computerized drainage. Do you know, I was looking at Lisa's notes earlier in the day, and she has our schedule for the whole year. And next to it says UMD. She has her dad's schedule, the head coach go. at the University of Minnesota Duluth. She yep. has that schedule also. Butcher gets uh, corralled by Steve Erickson. 29 seconds left in the football game for Missouri. They can take away some positive things from this performance, particularly in the first half. You cannot turn the football over on the road against the eighth-ranked team in the country that many times and expect to pull an upset. Drew, you're right. You know, and they had three giveaways in the first half. The defense only allowed 13 points. They pulled their necks twice and limited the field goal opportunities, gave up one touchdown. But that's the one thing that Coach Larry Smith is going to be upset about. He despises giveaways, and his offensive football team hurt him, giving away the ball too much. This should be the final snap of the game. Butcher knocked down after about four yards, and that is that. So the new two Big 12 begins in Texas. And John Makovic defeat Larry Smith and the Tigers 40-10. Missouri goes to 0-1, but 
uh, they showed quite a bit this evening in Texas. They got a good start as they wanted to. Well, they did. You know, uh, Texas made a few mistakes in the opener. Missouri made more. Bottom line was, if you turn the football over as many times as Missouri did, you can't beat a quality football team like Texas. 40 to 10, the final. And we'll come back in a moment. Here's one of many big plays for the Longhorns tonight. Brian.